Hi everybody, yeah. uh, we are here for <laughs> session one. Uh, I'm Rachel. And that's Steven. He's, he's yeah. So oh, so sorry. I was reading chat. <laughs> it will never work. All right, <laughs> Kayla. You, you Kayla's new I'm Kayla. I'm Rachel. Oh, I'm Kayla. Steven. She did it. She I got it. it. All right. <laughs> and we are the Faint Divinities, I guess. Um, yeah. We are a new <laughs> channel here on Twitch. Uh, we are playing specifically my favorite word apparently uh dagger heart which is a new tabletop rpg from the darrington press and critical role groups uh it is currently in open beta and if you have been following along with us which you definitely should we have a twitch that you're probably watching this on now or maybe you're in the future uh we have a youtube we have a twitter we have an instagram we have a discord if you want to be our friends and you definitely should if you have followed along with us we've done a couple of gm talks we've done a session zero with this full group and now we are officially here for our session one Yay! everybody's very excited <laughs> excited <laughs> all right so um again remember that this is an open beta and if you tuned in yesterday uh please do remember that we were thrown a loop yesterday because we were on version 1.2 of the open beta system yesterday uh, and then about halfway through the day we transitioned to 1.3 so my players did have to uh, really get on board fast with some changes uh, made new character sheets those of us who weren't in demi plane I think those who were your lives were a little bit easier actually um, it was very easy yeah thanks demi plane mm -hmm. you're doing the Lord's work uh, my new players though I think it's really good that you're building your characters you're just i would have never that. wanted to do this as this like a starting player like the online setup is fun and if you have someone to like walk you through it in person it's easy yeah. but if you're doing it on your own there's just too many options like there's too much to try to ingest <laughs> sure. also this is a great note for the people that are joining us in chat if you are hearing any uh audio issues people too low people too loud people that are like me typing and stuff please let us know um yeah and gene screen absolutely steven's chair is so so smooth today absolutely hey <laughs> he's got that's it what, that's what distracted me at the at the start of the stream i was i was i was excited that i had smooth chair mm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, did you get yeah. chair? Did you get chair socks? No, no, no. Uh, rug? No. I'm just. <laughs> um, um, um. <laughs> I would do a rug. <laughs> I did nothing different other than how I positioned the tilt of my chair. Okay. Yeah, he's nice. Guys, we're, we're all gonna sit up straight. Maybe I have no promises. Oh, I God. apparently do this. Um, look, cat. <laughs> That's what I was doing too. So, okay. But anyway, we, again, we are playing Daggerheart. We are actually going to do this. We did have a session zero where we built our characters yes. together. We talked about all of the setup. And today we're here to actually play roll dice and learn some Daggerheart in the new 1.3 system. So we're doing it. All right. So we're just going to dive right in because there are going to be some little building steps as part of this, but it's it's starting, guys. It's here. Y'all ready for the speech? <clears throat> ready. ready. I am so tempted, by the way, as I start this, to do, like, the Baldur's Gate 3 woman voice. I'm not, in case I embarrass myself, but, but like, I'm so <laughs> tempted. It might come out later. Anyway. Turn out so, of generation. Yeah. You're getting a name right off the bat. If you are a note taker, prepare your pen, your paper, because here it comes. I'm not prepared. <laughs> so I'll find uh, I'll reiterate okay. a little bit as we go but so our adventure is the Sablewood Messengers okay Marlo Fairwind I'll say it one more time for the group Marlo Fairwind the right hand sorcerer of King Emrys has been in a tight spot all of her most trusted allies had already been assigned to other critical missions when she was ordered to ensure safe delivery of an important package to Hush, a small village within the ancient forest of Sablewood. Maybe she wouldn't often choose to contract with a ragtag bunch of adventurers like your group, but she coincidentally had heard that you, Anora, 
had begun adventuring of late, and you do sit high in her esteem, so she called in a favor. Honora, I am throwing you into the fire right off the bat. Uh, hey. How do you know Marlo Fairwind, the right-hand sorceress of King Emrys, and why does she trust you to deliver this very secret package? Um, so I'm going to say that she knows Marlo because her family knows King Enris because she is a princess. Obviously, hold on, I got notes. She is a princess from Black Gum Hollow. And so that's how when they have like connections or whatever, they've met each other and she has played songs for Marlo before. So that's how I know each other. I guess that she trusts her because she knows how to navigate through the woods like she knows the woods you know because it's her backyard That's so a... she knows she'll get wherever she's going amazing <laughs> fantastic yeah i love that okay so we're gonna take a moment right here off the bat for us to do some player introductions now that we have our hook so kayla now that you have kind of given us our hook in tell us about your character Okay, so my character is Princess Anora Fiddleleaf. Okay, she is from an area called the Blue Marsh, and there's three ruling cities there. She's from the ruling city of Blackgum Hollow. Um, so her mom and dad, king and queen, instead of crowns, they wear white hats. And then her older sister um, is Princess Lillian, and she's the one that's going to inherit everything, and she wears a red hat just like Anora does. And... Nobody's really paying attention to Honora because they're trying to get Lillian married off right now. So she gets to go around and adventure and do all of her bard stuff. And had, that's that's her. I had not prepared myself to take notes and you're giving me gems right now. <laughs> Lillian is the cutest name yes. for a little Lillian. I mean, it's Lillian Alexandria Fiddleleaf. That's uh, her full. I Figured out Anora's middle light name yet. I'll get there. Is also really good. All right, all right. I am a note taker player, but sometimes as a GM, I really fall apart. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Kayla. So we're going to then let's let's go. I'm going to go up to Steven. Do you want to introduce your character to us? So I'm going to be playing Teddyus with his companion Wilbur or Bill and Ted. Um, they are from uh, the Hot Springs Yin Village. Um, the Yin Village is based at the uh, roots of the uh, Yin tree by its trunk. Um, it's a hot springs where travelers that go to make their pilgrimage to the Yin tree, which is like a sacred tree to his village, uh, are um, they go to like make their pilgrimage there for uh, whatever religious reasons they have. And then our people at the Yen Village offer them trade for use of their hot springs after a long, grueling journey. Um, Bill and uh, Ted overall lived the life of bringing people to the village from the base of the side of the mountains, um, kind of fighting off any rogue animals like boars or anything like that that might have tussled with the uh, pilgrimagers. All right. Very exciting. Y'all have way more backstories to share than I had thought. I really thought we were going to be getting name, ancestry, heritage. So uh, very wow. exciting. I'm a simian, by the way. I didn't I'm hit a, mine. I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a ribbit. <laughs> yeah. Don't even worry oh, about that, guys. The, <laughs> fortunately for y'all the screen literally should be showing what y'all are so that's that's pretty oh cool God. i like that oh, um I do so, see that yeah um all right well thank you so much steven so then uh let's go over to justin all right justin uh i'm gonna be playing jimbo the ridgeborn uh, dwarf rogue uh i'm actually more of a miner through and through uh you'll find me or my people just below uh, uh, Teddy or Teddy S's. I'm sorry, I'm gonna miss uh, miss your name until I say it a few more times. Uh, right below uh, Stephen's character's uh, place. Uh, it's just Ted. Yeah, there we go. Just below Ted. <laughs> um, underground there in our kind of dwarven uh, town, uh, where all of us are miners. You know, digging constantly, uh, occasionally finding some gems here and there. Um, 
and kind of got thrown out not too long ago after I uh, got found out that I found a pretty big score and didn't turn it over to the town, not for my own selfishness, but more for, I guess, my selfishness and I didn't want the town to change with this such a big score. Um, so I kind of hit it over at uh, Ted's uh, Ted's place. Uh, and so as people like me, even though like they just look at it, and, but that's, that's more or less me. Uh, Love that. A lot, right. lot of dirt uh, all over me, even though, you know, I got now free access to the baths there. Don't want it. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. By, the Yin <laughs> village has told uh, Jimbo that as long as he leaves his giant jib there, they just want to have it for the shiny bits of it. And then he has free access to their bath. He hasn't yeah. used it, but. Yeah, like it, it's it's a gift bestowed upon the least willing and the least delighted person to have that specific <laughs> gift. Also, yeah, I also did realize like that um, the I think uh, actual character art I had I'm trying to share on the screen. I have like a whole thing prepped, but it's um, I just don't yeah. know if it's working. So if you guys are still, I see it okay, now. great. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So like it's so just, cool. Just very oh. briefly, you should be seeing characters on the screen at this point. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly, uh, but you should see Bill, Ted, Anora. You should have seen Jimbo. And now I'll do the thing that I was trying to do because we're moving over to our last but not least character. Uh, Chris, if you want to go ahead and take us away with yours. All right. I got a little mustache for him. <laughs> My God. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> I'm oh, a God. Tank Mollerson. My friends call me Tinkerbell. He's a fairy warrior of the brave. Call of the brave. I know I'm call of the brave. Mm -hmm. I know I'm from the Isle of the Old Gods. I'm leaving my fairy grandmother's house, going on an adventure to become a tooth fairy. I love that. That's, That's perfect. So far. Honestly. That's great. Yeah. I actually know. He's that mysterious. I love that about him. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Uh, yeah, we uh, some people are enjoying it. Also, classic Jimbo, and also I think the mustache got some ha ha has from Sindu Windu, which or Sindo Window. <laughs> anyway, we're going in there. Yeah. All right, so those are our characters, and if you're watching at home, you can see that I should have the uh, the characters at least their images and basic information on the screen. So. If you're looking at who is talking, that's who they're playing. And we have these character arts. Please, again, if you want to look at it more closely, join the Discord. But, all right, returning back to our hook. So, again, Marlo Fairwind, the right-hand sorceress of King Emerus, has entrusted your group because she has connections to Anora's family and trusts her ability to navigate the Sablewood, which is a lush, vibrant, wild wood. It is well known, I will say, for uh, for trade routes. So it's not completely wild. Um, there are factions within it that keep it safe and keep the paths well tended. But you're very likely to run across wild things, animals that you wouldn't expect. So now, of note, I do want to take this into account. Marlo had intended to adventure with your party, but again, desperate times, desperate measures. And I have Marlo's image now in the screen as well, so you should be seeing it fairly soon. She is an elven sorceress again, and she looks really cool in the quick start adventure. It's a shame that she couldn't join us tonight, but... She was called away to other priorities against her wishes. She very nearly delayed this mission entirely, but this package she communicated to you, Anora, is of the utmost importance and time sensitive. Every moment that this package delays, bad things could happen. So she really was calling in her favor. She's hoping that you're a girl's girl. She's ready. She's ready to put- We'll let her down. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> Okay, so we again in session zero, we did some 
backstory, character building with our connections and everything, this is gonna be really brief, okay? I don't wanna spend a ton of time here, but part of the Quick Start Adventure did ask to build more connections. So I do wanna do that. I've given you each the templates and I hope that you've picked those out. So um, go ahead and let me know. We're gonna start, I'm gonna start doing clockwise probably. So Steven, do you want to tell me what you chose, what question you chose and tell us who you assigned it to and give us a little background. Um, so the question I chose out of the ones that you gave as an option was, um, let me double check, I have it here. Is that I'll keep your secret to tank Mollerson. Um, and uh, secrets are secrets, my dear uh, dungeon, uh, uh, dagger master. Um, I can't be divulging that information just yet. I love that. Okay, so you're keeping his secret even from us. You're fourth wall keeping the secret. Okay. Mm, it's a real one. What? Man's man. I man's hate man. this. No, okay, okay great. <laughs> All, right. All right, Jimbo, what did you choose to connect yourself to the group a little bit further and with whom? Um, so I was leaning towards, uh, I'm, I'm thinking I owe Anora a favor just, like, it's, it's going to be it's gonna be pretty shallow, but it's just for the fact that I am refusing to shower. She is very upset about it, or to bathe. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm honestly feeling like I owe, owe, owe you a favor with that. You know, use it as you wish. It's not going to be to get me in a bath, but anything else. Okay. You know. I'll remember so that. Future, future kind of bonding. Mm -hmm. That's so sweet, honestly. All right, Kayla. <laughs> your turn okay so mine the question i picked was who intimidates you and it's definitely tank because he's cool right and we and we talk but the tooth bag the teeth are so big it's a little freaky to me that's not normal that's not natural why do you have these giant teeth in a bag i don't know it's a little <laughs> freaky i'm a little scared a little intimidated <laughs> Fantastic. We're Fair enough. really building into that job. All right, Chris, mm -hmm. last but not least, let's go. And then mine was uh, Anora. I tell her everything. Uh, because <laughs> frogs have very little teeth, it is an easier friendship for me. Um, not as tempted to, to go after them. My um, teeny tiny teeth don't matter. And frogs don't have bottom teeth. And I keep trying to convince her to put some bottom teeth in. And that's very intimidating. And I've just been those following giant around teeth. the forest, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thank you guys for building those connections. Please remember that this is really narrative driven. And so if you can build any of your connections out during the game, please feel free to do so. But for now, we have actually entered the Sablewood. So this evening, just as the sun is beginning to set, though you wouldn't really know it because the canopy here in the Sablewood is so thick that actually not a lot of sunlight gets down to this lower levels, but there is light. And at first it's difficult to see where those lights come from. But as you travel deeper in, you realize that this truly is an enchanted wood. Some of the fireflies that dance seem to glow in a way that lights up the canopy itself. And as the day progresses, they too dim, almost in accordance with the day. So, this evening your party finally did make it to the Sablewood, which is a sprawling forest of colossal trees that some say are even older than the Forgotten Gods themselves. It's a place renowned for two things. It's sunken pathways that provide the trade routes for many traveling merchants, and it's unique hybrid animals. Even now, from within your carriage, and I do want to note that a lot of us who are coming from Dungeons & Dragons, we're used to getting carts, we've had wagons. I've never traveled in a carriage in an adventure as a level one, but this is an opulent carriage. Those of you who are inside of it, it is fitted with 
red velvet cushions and draperies that you can peek out the windows to look at the surrounding areas. It's beautiful. It's also not, remember, we're all a small group here. Uh, it's not smaller. It's not a halfling sized carriage. So y'all have had a lot of space. You've been traveling in comfort and from within the carriage, you can hear a lot of strange sounds. The bird calls of the lark moths, the croak of the lemur toads, the skittering of a family of fox bats in the underbrush. But one of you is not as lucky. One of you has to drive the carriage. Who is it that's driving the carriage? Um, I, I, me and Ted, uh, or me and Bill would be driving the carriage. Okay. All right. Yeah. So our ranger with his animal companion are both taking helm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So you have noticed, may maybe both of you, something unique about the look of the trees here in the Sablewood. What is it? Um, that like the, uh, the bark on the trees has a slight glimmer to it, which may be why it's called like the Sablewood is because of the way it like, shines almost like a metal or like a glass. Yeah. Ooh, so it's it's got like metallic trees. So maybe that's why those fireflies are able to really conduct that light so well is that the reflection off of those is happening. And as the dusk begins to settle, I will say as well, some of the bioluminescent mushrooms and fungus and blue glowing moss that you can see some of you through the carriage windows is also reflecting off of that, those trees that bark in different hues because they're not all silver trees there are copper trees and there are gold trees so when you look out there are these glittering glimmering rainbows of light as you're traveling through this lush forest okay so tank your wanderborn community and i tankerbell just to be clear i'm talking <laughs> because i'm going to start calling you guys by your not names mm -hmm. so that can get tricky mm -hmm. You're, you are part of the Wanderborn community. So you learn a lot about all kinds of different areas. And in your community, you guys call the Sablewood something else. What was your people's name for the Sablewood? And why did you call it that? The Glitterwoods, because it's very fairy-like, you know, and we feel very like welcome here, you know? Kind of like how uh, Ted feels great in a hot spring. I love that. So as you're traveling through here, do you get, does how does your character feel? Good. He's, uh, you know, fairy Dustin throwing it in the air. He's just kind of like having a great time. He's just fist pumping and <laughs> raving, like rolling down the window. Like beginning of road trip vibes. You know what I mean? I love that. Okay. All right. Jimbo. As you're traveling through, as a syndicate rogue who often deals in secrets and rumors, what strange or interesting rumor have you heard about the Sablewood? Oh, oh, you're on mute. I, I thought you were pausing, but you're on mute. That, like, yep, yep. Colder, I thought you. you were thinking. <laughs> I, I was, um, uh, but yeah, so my, my, my community is not, not too big on these, uh, you know, growing, moving rocks, uh, some people call trees or whatever, but, uh, supposedly, uh, her, and some rumors are some, you know, kind of goblin groups that uh, aren't too friendly out this way. So, you know, keep our, keep our trade typically away from here. Okay. Okay. I don't know if they're bandits or just trades people. We've been avoiding them for whatever reason. Okay, I'm going to give you a name for the thing that you have heard of as part of that rumor, which are the Thistle Folk, okay? One of the factions that lives here in the Sablewood is called, is known as the Thistle Folk. And although you know that really as a community, not all of them are bad. And in fact, a lot of them live in the bramble and the brush. Um... There, because there is such a lucrative trade to be made in robbing the people along these lanes and stuff, 
they've made quite a bad reputation for themselves because this select few criminal of the thistle folk they absolutely have done some really grisly things here so you're you would be concerned and, and right to be as you're navigating through this forest definitely peeking through the uh, like curtains of the car uh, carriage just kind of keeping an eye out but keep looking up and just close the curtain <laughs> All right, last question before we really keep moving forward. So everybody has answered any kind of question, but this one I just like so much that, Ted, I'm going to give you one more question. So as a ranger, remember I said that there are so many hybrid animals in this forest, but as a, high, as a ranger, what hybrid animal have you been hunting for years that you're hoping to see while here in the Sablewood? Maybe the reason that you took the not cushy job of sitting at the front and driving this carriage. Mm, okay. I think it would be like the uh, the the goat eagle. The goat eagle, amazing. Mm, so, so it's like a, it's, it's kind of like a, a griffin, but with a goat instead of like the bird head and lion uh, uh, portions. Like a hippogriff, I guess, but with a goat head. <laughs> and I'm... smaller and goat sized. Tell me a little bit more about this. Is this predominantly a land animal or a flying animal? It's, it's predominantly a, a flying animal. It lives on the, like, in like uh, uh, cliffs or places like trees where it can like go up and like come down and go back up. Um, just like a goat would like normally hop and like scale like a side of a mountain. It just is, you know, if it slips, it catches itself. Well, that certainly is going to have been um, intriguing for you as you've been driving this carriage, because again, there are so many animals in the woods here. There are, and you don't know what they are, but you've seen bright, vibrant birds that are flying and look like they're on fire. And every time you glance up thinking maybe you're going to see your prey, but it is just one of those birds, you begin to wonder what kind of bird is that. Very briefly at one point, you could have sworn that you saw a fox bat. And as it turned its head and you could see the back of it, it looked like there was an eye on the back of its neck. That mm. struck you as weird because fox bats are pretty normal, but that eye on the back of its neck, you clocked that for later as maybe something you might want to ask someone to see if anybody's known about it. All right. Okay, very, very big world that we've built here. So, okay, moving on. At this part in the Quick Start Adventure, they've asked me to kind of do some mechanical overview again. I realistically think that we're pretty good, um, but I don't want to move too quickly for the people who especially are newer at stuff. Would it be helpful to do a refresher now, or should I introduce that as we get into stuff? What's y'all's preference? Go all in. Yeah. We don't need that refresher. Okay, okay. Okay, we ball. We're brave and bold. <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. <laughs> okay, okay. Just alive. All right, oh, perfect. We're alive. alive. I do have I do have notes here, so if at any point you need a refresher on mechanics of rolling, those kinds of things, let me know. We will talk about combat once we get to that point, but we're just gonna breeze right past. Justin, do you have a question? I did have one question. Uh, one part I wanted to clarify on, on like say stress. Uh, I know like that's a, one of the big things we can use towards things. Is there a clear way on how to get rid of stress outside of rest? Um, um, stamina, potions. stamina potion. Okay, that's the only way. Okay. Most of it is going to be long rest, short rest, or stamina potions. Um, or, well, long rest, short rest, there are de stress things. Um, there are little things here and there as well. Um, there are foods that do it. You might encounter some of this in this adventure if you're looking very close. We'll find some ways to be really chill for a little bit. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> that is true for some, for some people. Um, Okay, great. So 
The only piece then that mechanically I'm going to remind everybody of is that we're rolling those duality dice, those D12s. The biggest piece is that when you roll, I want everybody to get into the habit of announcing what you've done in the way of success with hope. I, I succeed with fear. I fail with hope. I fail with fear or critical <laughs> like, or however you want to do it. But, but though that's really... The reason that that's so important here is it's gonna tell everybody, oh my goodness, Cindo Windows asking, can Anora read her romance novel to de-stress? I'm a, mechanically, no. Ro our, role play wise, absolutely she can. Maybe she's reading it in the carriage. Uh, but, okay, so just remember that as we move forward. So, let's go ahead and dive right in. So, Ted, you have been driving this carriage you've been taking care of that for us so at one at some point and remember that you guys have been riding for the better part of a day and at one point all of you inside of the carriage this has been a pretty comfortable ride again you're sitting on what is effectively velvet crushed velvet nonetheless it's beautiful it's opulent uh and the trails here for a forest they're surprisingly smooth because these are such well-known trade routes but at one point it's getting a little windier and you're feeling the horses kind of jostle you inside you might bang on the wall a little bit for ted because you've gotten quite accustomed to your really nice way of life um and at a one particular point, the way it veers, the carriage veers pretty suddenly. And one of the wheels actually, you can feel it from underneath, comes up off as it's tucked onto one of those sides of uh, little tight corners. And you can tell that Ted is struggling or something is tight here uh, so you can feel it jostling from inside of the carriage you ted as your steeds pull the carriage around a tight corner one wheel coming off the ground for just a moment you see an overturned merchant's cart laying sideways in the path before you and blocking your way forward a scattering of fruits and vegetables litter the trail and as you pull to a stop, you see stepping around that carriage, or sorry, stepping from around the side of the cart, uh, steps a Strix wolf, which is a large creature with the body of a wolf, the face of an owl, and large wings adorning its back. At this moment, as you're seeing it and you look really closely, it's still chewing on something, and your eyes light on its meal which is the hand of presumably the dead merchant from inside of the cart it stares at you curious trying to judge whether you're friend or foe then before you even have a moment to think you see following clumsily behind two small pups watching their mother cautiously from within again the rest of you feel the carriage come to a stop what would you as a group like to do Ted, quit letting Bill drive. <laughs> <laughs> I was using my feet for that last part. Um, but so we can actually, we can peek out the window, right? Sure. Yeah, I, I would yeah. Like lean and like slap the side of the carriage to try to get mm -hmm. someone to poke their head out. Clutching my little bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this <laughs> waiting to see Nora is very excited about the little baby she's not even clocking the hand she's just like oh my god babies oh. so you <laughs> so you've heard the knocking on the carriage you've looked yeah, out have you jumped yes. out what are you doing no no okay, she's okay. just you're looking just, out she just moved the head. curtain to the side she looked and she said oh my god babies and you can hear like the little chittering of the the pups as they're coming up to their mother, kind of venturing a little bit further through their lives. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> hey Jimbo, uh, pretty sure that uh, we got a I got a, a dead merchant up here. Oh, I pop open the door and stumble out. <laughs> You know, I assume we got several steps onto these things. Is it, I'm assuming it's a normal size cart. Oh, yeah. Carriage. 
Yeah. So a lot of steps are like we lower our attach our like little step ladder out so we can all you know get out easily. Easily. Uh, I, assume I assume they're being accommodating. Yeah, <laughs> march out, look over that way. So. Okay. Is that a, is that a hand in his mouth? Is that a mouth? What is that? That's a that's a beak. Uh, it's a beak. <laughs> <laughs> Think that's a pet? Okay. Uh. A pet? No, I mean, I look at Bill. Wait, maybe we can shoot away. Shoot it away. So Enora looks out there and she sees the hand in the mother's mouth, and it it kind of changes her viewpoint. She's still like, "Those are very cute babies," but she's like, "Guys, we gotta leave that thing alone. It's got a hand in its beak, not a mouth to be." What if there's an injured person missing their hand? We can like reattach it who would want to live without their hand their you know exactly. instrument play and could agree yeah. sorry what what was that i i kind of want to get in there and greet them and see if they're friendly or not yeah and it, i want to inspect their teeth oh, oh. I, want to I want to see what they're packing you know what i mean it's uh... Bugaloo and Chessa, oh my fucking god, he fucking dead. <laughs> okay, so... Either it's great and I get a pet, a baby, or we kill him and I get their teeth. Let's, let's it's a win-win. Yeah, leave so the win. cart where it is. I don't know if anyone wants to stay by it, but then, you know, approach cautiously, not hands out, because obviously what? they're a fan of hands. That's true. Yeah, I love the planning. But well you, so, so the way that tabletop RPG goes is the person who announces an intention gets to say what happens. So in this case, you've announced what you would like to do. If you're moving forward in that, I need a description of what you're doing. Okay. I'm, you got this. Are you hovering over the I'll, approaching I'll how slowly. closely my bag? I'll lean down to Bill and I'll say, Bill, watch his back. <laughs> He's, he's, I get in. Know, Bill's bird following. Bird. Bill's following. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just out of arm's reach. Just out of arm's reach. Okay. All right. Great. So, the Strix Wolf is wary of your movement. You see, the babies actually begin to walk a little bit forward, and the mother kind of puts her head down and looks back up at you, kind of the way that their heads move. Uh, we're gonna make our first roll. We're going to see how she reacts. This is going to be using your presence trait. Uh, unfortunately, unlike most warriors, uh, you do have a plus one in presence, right? Okay. So you're going to grab your duality dice and you're going to roll them, adding your presence. Remember, you can also spend hope if you would like to add an experience if it applies. And then you're going to tell me the total and which die rolled higher. Can I start with two? Uh... Help him with. You do uh, start with two evil. hope from the beginning, I think. Right. From yeah, you do. Everybody. Bill. So, real quick, before everybody starts with two hope, please make sure those are marked on your character sheet if you can apply that. Steven, what were you saying you wanted to do? Um, can I uh, add Bill's experience of bill brilliantly bold to, to like fluff it, like his feathers out to like. Aggressively? To no, no, no! Like, uh, like, like in like uh, a friendly kind of manner. A friendly chicken How dance. Be puffing your chest out in a friendly manner. Oh. <laughs> He's inspiring, seducing the boys. Seduce, yeah, very, very much. This is a mom, and Bill's a dad. Okay. Oh my God! And they're both <laughs> avian. They are hybrid animals in this forest, guys. <laughs> and ain't no daddy in sight, you know. So uh, I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say, well, um, so so then Bill, Bill can help. I'm not Bill as familiar has, with the companions. So Bill has six, two experiences as well. Well, the, but the um, experiences don't apply. But I think, I guess the can, help action could. The, yeah, the, yeah, I'm gonna say it does. Yeah. Okay. Do, do, do I need to use a, a hope to help? You them? do. You are. You yeah, are gonna spend think. a hope. Does okay. Bill have his own hope? No, nope, he uses mine. Okay. All right. Great. So you are spending your hope on this. So that's gonna be the advantage. Um, remember, other people can use advantage theirs as well, but it won't add more. It's just gonna give you more options for choosing the higher one. So, Chris, are you using a hope to do anything else, or are you just gonna let it ride? I think since he, I got uh, the power of Bill behind me. 
let's <laughs> let's set sail let's go let's go babies <laughs> all right first roll of the thing remember you roll it and don't touch it afterwards you have to leave it let's go <laughs> Uh, 13 with fear. 13 with fear. Okay. All right. So the DC what, was... You... Oh, it has oh, the... oh, oh, wait. Okay. I'm yeah. so sorry. So what was your hope die? Oh, uh, one. Oh, all right. Well, Steven, you are going to get to roll your hope die on your side. Chris, what was your fear die? Uh, 12. Oof. 12. Big boy. Oof. Well, I did get you a 10 with hope. All right. That's a good roll. Well, so that's a 10 plus a 12 if you're using that one. So that's 22 plus your how much? Your one, right? Oh, right. 23. So 23, but still with fear. So this is a huge success. The, the difficulty was 10 on this. So it is a success, but it's with fear. Okay, so I am going to get to take my first fear token of the game. And you guys, I have fear tokens for each of your characters, and I'm really excited with it being his first because his fear tokens that I've selected are teeth. Oh no, Rachel! <laughs> so I am going to get to take a tooth and add it to my little jar of stuff and you all will get to see what you're shot later. oh yeah it's just delicious <laughs> yeah absolutely i needed like a really clear crunchy. thing to show it um but anyway all right <laughs> so now i am going to change the scene as well but let's do the success portion of this at first because again you've succeeded you get you accomplish your goal i just the just the world might evolve around you okay so as your success with well y'all can tell me what happens it's a huge success so with bill there kind of posturing and with you what's going on um me and bill go up and stick our hand out but not too close to him i guess like in the hopes that they will like come halfway back to us okay. all right yeah so in this case the the little baby owls or the baby strix wolves i'm so sorry are going to look up at their mother again and as the mother lowers her head kind of chittering at them she's going to allow them to come forward to you and both of the little babies come up to you and kind of around your if you're on the ground which i don't think you're flying yet they around your legs and let you pet them Oh, but my gosh. It's only for a moment, though, because as part of that fear roll, the next thing that's going to happen, and in the Sablewood, it's a magical place. You've heard that the weather can change really abruptly, and all of a sudden you hear, and lightning starts flashing that you can actually see through the canopy in this case, looking like fireworks in this magical glittering forest. And as you all look up, the trees begin to erratically begin to sway in a heavy wind that is blowing through and then rain starts coming down very heavily. So at this point, as the rain comes down, the Strix Wolf also kind of keeping her eyes on you kind of calls her babies back and she is going to lean down to her pups keeping eye contact with you but seeming very comfortable with you and her pups clamber onto her back and then they all alight up into one of the trees and you see the feathers uh fluttering down a few of them as they alight into a nearby tree and nestle in for warmth and comfort from the rain but now it is really picking up very fast. This rain is serious. Now, I'm gonna spend that here. So, um, was it too late to see if they had eyes on behind their necks? Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna say that the mother did not and the, one of the babies did it, but the third one did, yeah had a little eye as it was clambering onto the back, had a little eye on the back of it. Just like those fox bats. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> okay, so it is now raining really heavily. Again, the thunder and the lightning are crashing around you, and the rain is coming down, but this cart is still here in the path. For now, anything, certain items that you're checking are going to be at disadvantage because of the way that this rain is so heavy, okay? So take that into account as you make your next plan. The Strix Wolf has left. What are we doing now? Can we can we loot the carriage? If you want to try to loot or the carriage? the the cart, the overturned. Does that sound like a good yeah, idea? Oh yeah. Or leave it alone. Like what's happening? What's the vibes? Well, these are definitely still locked onto the uh, this flying thing up in the tree. Just keep okay. it. It's chilling up All there right. for now, but trust nothing. Um... <laughs> I wanna I wanna go see what's in that in that cart. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we got to see do. what's in it because we got to move it regardless, right? Like, we got to yeah. kind of shift it to get it out of the way. Wait, can we go around it? Or is it like all the way in the way of the it's road? It's right in the dead center of the road. Yeah. There's no way that your carriage is going to be able to get around this. So we're going to have to move it anyway. So we might as well go check it out. Yeah, I want to I wanna pick through the debris and see what I can find. Okay. Well, I know that Tankerbell is already up there near that cart because mm -hmm. he had already approached the wolves. You're maybe a few paces back, but you're nearby. And you two are approach. are you both approaching or was it just a Nora? No, I'm going. approaching in the back. Um, I know I'm gonna have to help move this in a minute, so I'm gonna let them, you know, clear it out and I'll, I'll do the heavy lifting with the tanker okay. bell there at the end. Okay, so you as a group are all basically walking forward at, to the, at this point. Okay, and Nora, it sounds like it was your idea. Are you leading the charge of investigating this card? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Yeah, so, I want to see what shiny things we can find. Yeah, so this is not a roll. Again, this game is limits a lot of rolling and stuff. It, it really, okay. if there's not going to be a consequence of the, of the action, then I just tell you what's happening. So in this case, okay. as you search the, the merchant cart, it has been stripped of all valuables. There's nothing in here. And the dead driver with his mangled arm, by the way. It uh, it almost looks like it was broken at the shoulder before the hand was actually mauled off. That has been picked over by the Strix family for food. Are you inspecting the body further? I would like to, yes. Okay. So like to, She's kind of squeamish about it. She's got a stick. All right. He's poking him with that stick, moving him around. So he's been left with his clothes and everything. Nothing has been changed there. But as you kind of like do that with the stick and you flip over the collar of his shirt, you can see that there is a slit across his neck. Bad vibes. What's bad vibes? Not good. Negative. Negative. Check my shoulders, <laughs> make sure no fl things are coming up behind us. <laughs> uh, so, I, well, you, so you're checking over your shoulder. Um, you don't see anything coming up from behind. I check him for an eye. Now I'm suspicious of eyes. I'm looking everywhere for okay. him. <laughs> I spy an eye in the forest. <laughs> All right. Are, how, how serious are you getting about this? Are you really like flipping him over and everything? He yeah, kicked him over. A little animated about it. All right. So you walk away very <laughs> confident that there's there's um there's no eyes on this guy at least. So no eyes. Did you see an eye too, Tank? Oh, yes. On one of the little mm -hmm. babies. I forgot. Oh, my character did not tell you guys that he saw an eye. <laughs> 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 there's eyes in this forest. Yeah, there's an eye on oh fox back back there had an eye on its neck too. Mm -hmm. So this is guy is there did. any signage on the carriage at all? Like any letters or the cart that's that's knocked over? Any of the crates have anything marked on them? Anything? You know, it's a great question. Why don't you answer it for me? Is there anything? Um, it looks like there might have been a symbol on it, but it was smashed so bad. You can just see like bits of purple paint. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right. I love that. Yeah. Maybe we'll find that symbol somewhere else in the future. You can mm -hmm. plug it in somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what are we doing, guys? Uh, let's push this bee off the road. All right. 
Okay, so as you guys, are, who's all doing this? Uh, yeah, just a, it's Jimbo. Not me. I'm okay. a lady. Excellent. So, all right. Boys. So as you guys go to do this, now I'm going to say that Justin, Jimbo has been the person keeping the lookout the most. So I'm going to go ahead and let you make for this check. Uh, I'm going to let you make an instinct roll, but again, it's going to be at disadvantage because of this heavy torrential rain. Alrighty. Instinct. All right. So with disadvantage, I'm rolling my regular 2d12 and then another one that's uh, whichever, like that one counts as another fear die. Just uh, double check that. Cool. That works for me. Yeah, Those two, so. and then the other fear. Um, all right, so that's going to be an 11 with fear. Ooh, all right. Pretty tough, guys. Okay, all right, an 11 with fear. So the DC was 14. Again, it's so dark out here. And with a fear, I get to take one of your tokens. Yours are rocks! <laughs> <laughs> less exciting but they're fun for me so i'm going to take one of these fear tokens for myself and at this point so in a whirlwind of cracking branches as the hairs stand up on the back of your neck you know jimbo that there's something there you just can't see it because it's just so such heavy rain so in a whirlwind of cracking branches and unsheathed blades, a group of four thistle folk, which you immediately recognize because even through the rain, you can see glinting off of their own armor, all of these little dancing lights because their armor is made from these tiny polished stones that are all interconnected in such a way that allows them to move through the bramble, which I'm giving you that knowledge from because you were aware of them from stories to begin with. So they jump out from the brush alongside the road. The overturned cart was an ambush. We all knew that it was probably going to come, right? Um, they stand before you, weapons drawn, blocking the road. I'm going to be taking out the action tracker. Oh, boy. And we are going to be setting up a battle map. So things are definitely going to be starting. Um, now, in this case, uh, let me go ahead and move to the next part. I have those of my players and anybody in chat who wants to see it in the Discord. I have put pictures of this map. I am also going to be sharing it in here, but I just have to figure out where it is. So give me just a second. Um, where is this one? Uh, I don't think it's that. Oh, whoopsies. Okay, character slideshow, not that. All right. Yes. You brought out your action tracker. Uh huh. And I have rally, which is once per session when the GM brings out the action tracker. I get to describe how I'm going to rally everybody and then give myself and all my allies a d6 rally die. Absolutely. So and I'm so, going to let you take the very first a a item I, here. It's not going to be a full action. It's just going to be you using your rally. rally. So, so as, as you, you see all of these thistle, thistle folk beginning, beginning to close in, and you with your, your bardic, bardic skills, what are you doing, doing to rally your group and prepare, prepare for the, the coming combat? combat? Okay. So it could just be like inspirational, right? Like she could just yeah. like say something. Okay, so she's going to raise up her little cutlass and be like, there's four of them and there's four of us boys. We can take them. Oh, that is so cute, the little mm -hmm. tiny frog. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Right. And so that means you guys all get a little, a dice to help you. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. On your screen, you should be seeing a map that is for our encounter. Um, it has, and again, for my players, you can see these in the Discord as well. To give you kind of some information around this. First, there is a road going around the center. You can see that the carriage has stopped right at a bend in the road. Um, and then on either side, there are these thick trees and everything. Um, in the map right now, what's different from the picture that I took earlier is that the characters have all 
y'all are all right there grouped up as these bandits emerge but i am going to say that they are all there in the center they're right there in the fray for you so um there are three of these ambushers that you can see and this is very rare but you having the upper hand the three thistle folk are going to rush you because of their special move ambush this is really rare in this game this doesn't happen um they get to attack even though there are no tokens on the action tracker yet this only mm -hmm. happens when they enter the scene so it won't be like this every time but right now they are slashing at you with daggers protected by armor made of polished stones so i'm going to start with my first ambusher let's go ahead and dive in doo, doo, doo. okay so all right with my first thistle folk ambusher i am going to say that from where i've judged them to be they're gonna start oh you know what this is the whole thing though i promise that i'm not trying to bully you caleb but they are definitely robbing people and you are the fanciest person here so they're going so one of them is going to make an attack upon you so that first one is moving into melee with you and they're going to make attack against you i in this case roll a d20 i have a plus one for this attack so come on you said okay. that you were gonna do well let's go baby that's gonna be an 11. okay what am i what, what number evasion? am i calling you my evasion is a nine <laughs> <laughs> okay, so because I rolled my attack, that's the first piece, and I have passed your evasion, at this point I get to roll damage. So I, in this case, with their ambush attack, it's a little bit beefier than a lot of their stuff is, I'm going to go ahead and attack with 2d8 plus 4 physical damage. So let me go mm. ahead and grab those d8s for myself. Just a little frog. Mm -hmm, just a little frog. Oh, one of them was an eight. Eight, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, plus four. 17. Uh, 17. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 17 is my hit. So the next piece of this is does that fall into your minor? You're... You know what it falls into. Right. It's my severe, you okay. know. Fantastic. Don't even okay. pretend. Okay, it's your severe. And there's no way I can reduce that down. Can I use my armor? I don't. You can use your armor. Yeah. But I think, because you said it was 17. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the breastplate armor got hit down to a 3 instead of a 5, so it wouldn't multiple. even matter. You can, I can use, use multiple, multiple all at once. Yeah. So okay. what is your armor score? Three. Three? Okay, so uh -huh. what is your, how far do you want to reduce it? Down to your minor or to your major? I think, wait a minute. Yeah, I think major. Okay. Yeah, because I, right. I might so need more later. So what is your major score? Six. Six? Okay, so you need yeah. to reduce it by 11. So that's going to be mm -hmm. four uses. Well, no, no, what's, right? what's your severe score? What's my what now? What's your severe My score? severe score is 12. So, so 12, it just has so to get under 12, right? Oh, you're right. 12. You're right. So you so only you really need to only reduce it by... By two. It's by 17. Two. The damage is 17. 17. If it, but if it's three and she does two Fantastic. armor slots, okay. that'll make it six. So I need to color in these little squares yep. for the armor because I've used two of them. You're going to mark two and of then, those armor slots. And then you're and going then mark to take... Two H uh-huh for your major threshold absolutely okay i know that probably viewers at home are getting really confused by this functionality but i promise that this is in fact the way it works um, it works so, it, it makes how did you hit me I love you so much. I'm not going to do it again immediately, um, but I am going to do it at some point. Okay, so now is going to be a good time, I think, to try to talk about the mechanics if I can find that page. Okay, because I wanted to get through that first little round so you can see what's going to be happening as an example. But for combat, remember that um, when you, when it is your turn, and I still have my other guys to go, but when it is your turn, if you want to attack a target, you're first going to ask me if it's in range of your weapon. If not, you're going to need to move closer. 
if it is in range or once you've moved there, you get to make the action roll with that weapon. That's the first roll that I did, right? You're going to make an action attack roll to see if you hit their evasion or bypass their evasion. If you succeed, then you get to roll damage, okay? So there are two rolls that happen. Everybody, make sure that you're looking at the damage dice in your weapons right now. It should all be like 1D something at this point. That's the die that you're going to roll. And if there's a plus after that, you're going to add that when you do it, okay? So just be aware of that. And now I'm going to do my next attack. Any questions on any of that before we keep breezing through? How did you hurt me? Like, because I did where that. did you hit me? I no, where? You. How? Oh. Like, how? <gasps> Kayla, you are so <laughs> good at this. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Well, I don't actually see what weapons they... Oh, it's daggers. Of course it's daggers. Yeah, All right, so one them. of them is coming through the rain, and they are just jaunting through. And I'm going to say that this one is a sneaky little bugger, and as part of their ambush, you feel them tap you on one of your shoulders, and as you whirl in the rain, they come swinging to connect with your chin with the dagger oh, in their no. hand. And then mm -hmm. on that second hit, they're stabbing up at your arm, okay? So, and oh, that's the gosh. damage that you're taking. But how did you deflect some of that big, big hit? with your armor what what did that look like for you so where it hit i'm gonna say is right at the side kind of area there's a belt that connects it with a clasp and it kind of like hit off the clasp and that's my armor breaking a little bit is the the belt has come undone there so it's like a little looser on that side now Amazing. If that makes any sense all right, I'm going to tell you as well, this ambusher, he was confident that with you being this little tiny frog, this little tiny ribbit, this girl, he was confident he was going to one-shot you. And as that glances, he looks up at you. He's also a ribbit, by the way. These are all three <gasps> ribbits. Okay? Oh, my <laughs> so He's ready to That's fight you. Okay? I'm mad now. These are... These are peasants, Rachel. They sure oh are. My God. None of them have hats. None peasants. of them have hats. Okay. How dare they? Yep. All right. So next. Oh, so hat. the next step is I have two more ambushers that get to attack. So good job. You're doing so well. Okay. Here we go. So uh, the next one is going to move. I'm going to say that the both of the next ones are going to move immediately up to let's let's get our newbies involved all right so chris they see you and they're like we got to take this pretty boy out and they are <laughs> jumping into the fray with you okay so i'm yeah. gonna go ahead and make the first attack so i get to roll my d20 because i'm the gm and i'm gonna add one to it that's a 10 total does that six eleven? They are jealous. Wow. Okay. So as the first one comes up and swings up, what do you do to evade that? Because you're just too fast. I uh, take a tooth out of my bag and I spit in his face. Amazing. So like, that wow. first one, as they're coming up with it, it hits them square between the eyes, and they. And you see them, get, they look at each other, and the second one kind of looks back at him, and he's going to come in at this point. So the next attack. <gasps> na -na 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 19 plus 1 is a dirty 20. Does that hit? That definitely hits. Nice twice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we are going to do our, all right, and I, I should have done it before, but you know what? We all talked about these rules before. You have to declare anything you want to do, like extra damage before you roll, not afterwards. I should have pumped in a little bit more damage, but this is going to be okay. Oh, I rolled. She's so good. She's rolling eights. She's oh, only yeah. rolled eights so far. So that's going to be, that's 16. It was eight and a four instead of an eight and a five. So Jeez. 16. Okay. What threshold um, does that fall into for your character? My severe threshold is 16. Wow. So 16. All right. Well, then I just reach your severe. But if you want to use any armor, it would at least knock it down into the major category. Yeah, I'm going to use a, a armor slot for that. Okay. And how many points is your armor? Uh, four. Okay, so that takes it down to a 12. Is that still in your major? Yeah, my major is eight. Okay, 
All right, great. All right, cool. Then you're marking one armor slot. So that second one, fueled by the rage of his friend missing and knowing this pretty boy is not going to get on and get one up on us, is going to. Ooh, oh, I'm gonna use a fear. All right. So as part of this, a little like the. Are so ominous. This is Jimbo's fear, the the concept of your fear in the world. So as he's coming up with he with this dagger, he is going to should I use my fear right now? I might need it later. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it. Don't worry about it. Okay. So he's going to slash up at you. No, I want to. I want to. And I get to start with two. It's fine. All right, let me put my two in there. Alright. So he's gonna slash up at you and these are cut purses, and you just used your bag of teeth. How do you secure your bag to yourself? Is it a strap? Do you just hold it? It's kind of just floats around me. It just floats around you? Yeah, it's just hanging out. It's like fairy. All right. Well, that first fairy guy, top. as he comes in with a pretty big hit, he raises up specifically because this is a coordinated attack that they make often. Drawing your eyes up, he comes down and does get you right there in the clavicle, but that's not really their intent. In that same moment, that one that had missed reaches out and with the fear that I am putting back into the tank, they are snatching the teeth and they pocket it and you see them grin. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is that's the bullshit. All of my turns. It is now your <laughs> turn. I do have my action tracker here. <laughs> All right. So um, remember, guys, this is loosey goosey. There is no initiative. If you want to do something, you get to. Um, so you said that they're all pretty close to all of us up there, right? Uh, yeah, there is one person who you can see is actually further back. Now that you can see everyone, there's one guy who doesn't look like the rest of them, but he's actually lurking next to y'all's carriage. Mm. But all the rest of them, y'all are right there with. Uh, I, well, okay. So wait, to be clear, there's a total of four people, three are with us, and one is by the carriage? One is by the carriage, and he he just looks like a dark outline-y shape right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Justin, uh, you are muted again. <laughs> I keep muting because I keep seeing my thing light up, so I'm like, I hope I'm not getting too much background noise. Uh, I was going to suggest, like, uh, like or, 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 we have two on tank and then one on... Uh, uh, Anura. Name at the moment. Uh, Anura. Anura. Uh, Anura. Yeah. Anura. <laughs> I need to see these like written in front of me. There we go. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I would, uh, Ted, seeing what just happened, would um, take a few quick like steps and like pull his shield and his um, weapon off of his back there, which is like a small curved sickle. I forget what it was called, yeah. but I will look it up. It's in the art. Um, and he will like run and run up the back of the one that just snatched the purse from Tank and using one of his feet, his hand feet, snatch the bag back and like his do a flip feet. over him. This is and, like... so many things that you're doing. This sounds like <laughs> I'm going to get all kinds of action trackers. So really, I'm just taking the, the, the. Okay. The rest the of this is flavor. Back. You're just flavor. taking that. All right. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. Well, then you certainly can. I get to place a, remember guys, I have the action tracker here. I have a token. I'm going to place an action token onto this card and so as part of this you are going to try to get this bag back but you don't get to automatically succeed you have to roll against the difficulty so and i want to remind you before you do any like dice thingy that you got your little rally die but you oh, have yeah. to announce it before you use it i okay. think 100 <laughs> absolutely so you get to tell me what kind of trait or uh do you think that this is um, it'd probably be like a, a, a snatch, so it'd probably be like a strength because it'd be like ripping it out of his hand. Okay, all right, great. Yeah, so you're doing a, a snatch, really feels like an agility to me, but I'm gonna let you have it. It feels, 
Let's do shine. I mean, agility's better for me, but I, I feel like it's like a, a good. If it's Custom better grab. for you, let's give you the agility on it. I think it's a quick yeah. movement in there, okay? Yeah, Are you okay. adding anything to your roll? I'm going to add the rally die. The rally die, okay? Yeah. Okay. That's going to be um, eight with fear. Or no, sorry. It's more than that. 17 with fear. Mm -hmm. And three on the rally die. Does the rally count as hope? Does it go towards the hope total or is it separate? I don't think that that has been clarified. Okay. So it says anyone can spend this rally die to roll it, adding the result to an action roll, reaction roll, or damage roll, or clearing stress equal to the rally die result. At the end of the session, all unspent rally dice are cleared. The rally die you distribute increases to 1d8 at level 5. So it doesn't say anything about using a hope. It's just okay. the, it's just part of the total. So what was ooh, your... Ooh, ooh. what was your? So it's uh, 20 total with fear. Okay, well, the, the difficulty was 13, so you absolutely do it. I am going to pocket your fear because this gets to show off what Steven's fear looks like. As your little Japanese macaque from those steamy baths, I have bath tokens for your oh, character. Oh, I love this. And I'm uh... going to be adding it to my fear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, great. All right. Um, so that's success. So number one, you do get to snatch it. And I'm not making anything else happen right now because I want to keep my little fear tokens. We'll start activating those in a little bit. But uh, that's that. You've done that absolutely. So you snatch it, and that, and it really is quick succession. It's it's straight up like coming in to stab at Tank. Tank dodges out of the way, spits the tooth. The next guy comes up and stabs down. Another one steals the bag, and you just snatch it right back out. Quick, quick succession. Fantastic, guys. What else are y'all doing? Oh, and I. Um... Is, I'm so sorry. Because it, it you rolled with fear, at this point, generally, I'm supposed to do something. That's how this game works is you're supposed to. Now, I could choose to not let you, but in keeping with the structure of this game, since you rolled with fear, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use an action. And I'm going to have... <laughs> I'm going to... There's just not as strong after that first hit, though. Hmm... I'll do it anyway. Um, all right. I That one is going to keep going after Anora, I think. So I'm going to use my action tracker because he's right there with you. Uh, I'm so sorry. And he's going to. <laughs> here we go. So D20. That's a nine plus one is ten. My evasion is nine, as you well yeah. know. Well, this one isn't as big a hit because the, the okay. ambush was stronger. So, mm -hmm. oh, but it comes to 15 damage because I rolled double sevens. So 15 damage. So how mm -hmm. are we dealing with this? Are we adding it? Are we okay. using any armor? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how much armor I would need to use to reduce it. Um, so 15, um, where are you trying okay. to get it to? Your major or your minor? I would like to get it six and under, so that, right? Because that would make it minor? Did so I make that up? So you have to cut it by nine, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. So that would be yeah. three. Okay. Uh, yeah. I I, mean, armor no. is there to be spent, and that will okay. add a role-playing aspect of you getting to tell us what this is looking like as your armor is just taking these hits. It's almost off. I got one more slot left. Oh. So they've cut all the buckles but one. Her little, you know, corset with her off the shoulder thing is what she's, it's basically, it's hanging on by one like shoulder clasp up here, her armor, her breastplate. Oh. It's almost gone. Wow. Oh my goodness. And she is scared in case anybody was wondering. Her right. little, her little rivet heart, just like this. Well, I like scaring people, and I'm so sorry, but this is how I dagger master. Okay, I can <laughs> at any time use a fear when it is my turn. I can use a fear to add two action tokens to do more stuff. 
and I'm gonna. I cannot activate that same guy that just hit you though. He has already acted, but we're going back in this time at you, Chris. We are still, you know what? Can yeah. I activate my fly? <gasps> you can't until it's your turn, but, but I love it. I activate my fly. <laughs> Get out of there, Tank! Yeah, get aggressive. I want to fly so bad. I still wonder what fluttering has started the engines revving. <laughs> All right, and you know what? Like... I'm going to even spend another fear, and I'm going to take four tokens. I really want to do some stuff. Um, all right, two next, more. Next player act we get. I'm, I'm going to come help. All right, so I am now going to attack with both of those ambushers on you, uh, Chris. So that's going to be starting right now with my die. Oh, that first one didn't hit you. This is the guy who didn't hit you before. I, I am right next to him now. You are. No, 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 19. Again, plus one is a 20 to hit, so that's going to pass your evasion. So here we go. She wanted to, I rolled them all and she was the one who wanted to try. Okay, a little bit less this time. So that is nine points of damage. So you could get rid of all of it if you wanted to, I think, but how do you want to deal with that? Why do I keep forgetting? Uh, I'm gonna use one armor slot because otherwise it would take three to get rid of no damage at all. So I'll just use one. And where does that push you into? The minor, the major? Uh, minor. Okay, wow. All right, just one hit point. Okay, great. Second one is attacking though. So next attack is happening and rolling again. Ooh, that was a bad roll though. Two plus one is three total. So that not is not gonna hit you. You describe for me how you dodged that second blow from the guy who came down on your clavicle the last time. I, uh, he comes from the side and I like strike a pose. And it just goes right past me. <laughs> I love that so much. All right, so he just, uh, uh, briefly, as you sparkle, he's distracted. He just doesn't see it at all. Okay, all right. Well, that I think, no, 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 no. I did have one left. I did have one left, and I'm going to use it on the man who hasn't attacked yet. So this other guy from the carriage side, this person is instead titled a thistle these other three are all thistle folk ambushers this is a thistle folk thief and they are going to come here into yeah they're gonna come here into the range because they could certainly get there that's still within close range and they are going to activate their skill which is called back off at you, Steven, because he sees that you are complicating these easy pickings that his friends are getting, and he wants to go ahead and get you to back off, so I'm spending that fear and making my attack, so. Oh my goodness, it's a natural 20. That's enough, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough slices. Steven, can you true can you remind me of how um how the the critical successes work, the damage? Um so for the critical success, uh it is you take the total of the dice, so if it's like a D6, it'd be six, and then you roll the dice and add that to it. All so wait, you take this is 3d6 physical. So I take so, 18 and then roll 3d6 as well? Uh -huh. what you're telling me? Jeez. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, all right. So then 18 plus 25. 28 points of damage. Now. Well, you got me in the severe. Okay. You got him. You got to do anything. <laughs> No, I'm not worried about it. That's too much to Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, so the back off blast as part of this, 
on a success, the thief is going to, which he did, he's going to place his hand on the target's chest and blasts you backwards, dealing that magic damage to you and pushing you into the far range. So when you're looking at the map here, he came up into the center and he has pushed you far back at the edge of the map at this point, okay? And he sneers as he does it and turns his head over to look at you, Anora. okay? I am all out of things I can do now, though. That's it, and I am empty. Mm. I have no I fear left. I like Anora to be able to do something now. <laughs> well, great. Y'all have to act when you want. Okay. It's time. Okay. Yep. Is so, I'm not... Anyone? What? Um, I think she's by herself. I think she's over, like, in an area and Tank and Steven are... Y'all are all pretty close. Y'all are all bunched. We're all pretty close. close. Yeah. Sorry, okay. is, is the, uh, the thief guy by himself currently? Uh, he, no, because everyone is really close in at this point. Like, so, <laughs> all of your enemies, all of your combatants are all very close right now. Except for okay. me. Except for him. Yes, he's far. He has been pushed to the okay. edge of the map. So I want to do, in the grimoire, the Book of Abra, she has something called a power push, which is make a spell cast roll against a target in melee range. So the one that's on her is in melee range. Uh -huh, and then it says, on a su su success, they're blasted back to far range, and they take D10 magic damage using oh, your proficiency. So, oh. I guess, I'm um, <laughs> aiming them over there. That's amazing. So, okay. So a spell cast, uh, and remember, I think you can add your bardic your yes. to this in my you little want. rally. So we're talking for the first time about a spell cast ability. Three out of the four of you have this. So remember, your subclass is going to clarify your spell cast trait. It's there on the card. Mm -hmm. For bards, this is presence. For rogues, it's finesse. Mm -hmm. For rangers, it's agility. Um, mm -hmm. Warriors, you don't have spell casting, so you can take it easy until you know mm -hmm. we multiclass later, maybe. Um, so you're gonna, it's gonna be a duality dice roll, and then you're gonna add the modifier to that score, so the presence modifier. Okay. 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 So I roll. I'm sorry. You're I'm, okay. I roll yes. both of these. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And, and then... add your presence. Okay. And do you have anything else you want to blow into this? Your do well. I, well, I have this one, but I would like to, I think, use the rally on the damage if I do get the hit. But can I use which way is she looking and spend a hope dice? Sure. Like her uh, eyes. Absolutely. Going. Like you're trying to distract him. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, spend a okay. Hope. So I'm going to race the hope really quick just yeah. so that I don't forget. Okay. I'm taking an, an item, an action. Okay. 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 So, it's fifteen with hope because it's the eight on the hope and a seven on the fear. Okay. So. so this is against the one who has been going after you, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, the one that's got me out here almost Their without any armor. Difficulty is thirteen. So you succeeded with hope. That is a okay. big boon. Mark a hope back for yourself. And by the way, in the future, maybe don't erase until after you do this because you restore your hope uh -huh. since you rolled with it. I get That's nothing. so cool. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You got your hope back. It is a success. Okay. So you get what you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and no. uh, what is the damage do that I roll you do? For... Okay, so on this one, it says, on a success, they're blasted back and take D10 magic damage using your proficiency. Okay, so, so what that's do I one do right now. Do so the 10-sided okay. die. This one okay. is, in my opinion, the hardest one to to kind of define. It looks like a diamond. It's, yeah, it's got five sides. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. Wait, okay. Yeah, and... yeah, I got it. Uh, and, uh, remember and my you're also one. doing your bardic one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. All right. So go I'm ahead and roll both. both of those. Okay. So it's a seven on the 10 sided and then a four on my bardic one. Oh my gosh. <gasps> you guys. Did I blast his corpse? Did he die? <laughs> Just yeah. flying through so, the air. So, <laughs> so they have no armor to use or anything like that he his severe is 10 
which means you in this blast he's destroyed tell me what this looks like as you destroy this guy who has been fucking yes. with you yes so i send him out like in the giant you know airstrike or whatever his body starts to disintegrate and just little dust over the battlefield as it shoots towards the character that's in the far range it just all over his body it's amazing all over, raining Fantastic. down <laughs> First blood, guys. First blood. Oh, that was a strong attack. That was, that All right. was very... That was nice. Tank, I know Starting. you want to fly. Are you ready to do that now? Do you want to go ahead and activate that? Okay, so we were all bunched up. She did an attack that pushes him back. What? He's just, gone. Just that that one's yeah, gone. I pushed back his corpse. The, one that so was, the two, two guys that were attacking you are still there. Yep, full okay. health. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to get off the uh, the ground before I get smacked again. <laughs> okay, so read me that skill. Do you have to spend anything? I think you spend a hope, I spend right? a stress. A stress. Okay. Uh, let me look at it one more time real quick. Yeah, so wings mark stress to take flight for a number of minutes equal to your level. So one minute. I don't know how long that is in the action tracker. It's okay. We're we're gonna you it's gonna get through combat. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons rules here, guys. It's like ten rounds. Like why not? You know, I'm you pull yeah, from yeah. what you know. <laughs> and then um could I do a duality or the uh what do you call like the double move? Uh the, the team Oh like a combo? tag team roll? Tag team roll. <gasps> you absolutely can! Yes, why not? Oh my god, I forgot okay. about those. So, Is Jimbo close to me? Somebody help me with this real quick before we do anything else. What? I assume that taking flight is an action. I'm pretty yeah. confident. I would assume so, right. that you get one there and then whatever and then else he does, you get another. For your tag team roll, it's going to be one item. All right, so mm -hmm. go ahead. Start. Tell me what this tag team roll is going to look like, you guys. <gasps> right. <laughs> um, I wanted to get Jimbo in here to reel him in to the battle with us, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm ready. He's in there. So Jimbo grabs my feet in a little whirlwind. I put my two hands, <laughs> <laughs> and we just go at him. Oh just... my god! <laughs> oh my and god! Just my feet and just... Can we? <laughs> I'm very jealous of your props. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that is so funny to me. Okay, so, all right. So just to clarify, y'all have this tag team special kind of all ramped up, and he's grabbing your feet and spinning you around, and you're slashing at him with your sword. Are you biting? What's happening here? Both. Spitting teeth. Oh my god. Oh my god. Am I just swinging you around? Is that the plan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're swinging him, and he's biting and You're splash. free, Adam. You're free, oh Flair. Oh, gosh. But it's right. okay to mine. <laughs> okay, for some reason, my uh, file is not letting me search it. Um, so, Steven, I don't know if you can pull up the tag team role mechanic. It's just everything is making my stuff go very, very slowly right now. Um but I believe what it is, I, I'm pretty sure, if I'm remembering correctly, and I don't know, 1.3, but to, for the attack, y'all are both going to make attacks. So you're both going to roll your duality dice plus whatever weapon you use, and then we choose whichever one succeeds, basically. Justin? Okay, so yeah, I wanted to clarify. It sounds like I'm trying to use him as a weapon. Um, <laughs> by yeah. swinging him but like the, but it's the tag team role it's it's like you maybe your brute force of swinging this fairy is the thing that's doing it i'm so excited okay so both of you roll an attack okay that's the first step and the dc that you're trying to meet is 13 uh, it might be better for me to do it separately but i was interested in using my sneak attack if the thief guy was nearby uh, I don't know if he's in the mix for this, you know, whirlwind attack. Um, and I don't know how a sneak attack would work with me using a person as a weapon. <laughs> I, oh my God. I'm okay, guys. This again I, I is after this. I know I love it. 
is what I was going to say. Because here's my thing, all right? It's a tag team role. It's meant to be loosey-goosey, crazy, fun time pants, you know? So okay, I'm, I got it. I found it. Um, so you both are going to roll your duality, your duality dice. And uh, then you guys choose which set you want to use. Um, and then you both roll damage dice, and that's dealt to whoever the DM determines. Yeah. And so, so here, as part of this, okay, Justin, <clears throat> you're saying you want to put your sneak into it. Now, technically, you would usually have to be hidden before you did it. But that or if I have an ally nearby, yeah. Which that's right. the ally is literally as close as it could be. I was going to yeah. give it to you anyway, because I was going to say that this whirlwind is crazy. How could anybody see you through all that fairy <laughs> dust, you know? But yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, we're going to pump that sne that into it. This is part of the tag team role. Oh, I'm uh, going to dump on it, uh, assuming the thief guy is in the mix for this uh, at the target. Okay. I would like to dump two of my hope die into it as well, or two of my uh, yeah, hope die for extra damage on it okay well first I I have things first that now. we have to attack first so gotcha. i'm not sure i had to clear that with the attack uh, you do you're right you're right okay. so if you're dumping extra damage yeah it's a good point cool. so it's two hope things being spent towards that okay all right so each of you make separate attacks you're gonna roll your duality dice and then you're going to add your weapon or whatever it is i, I think chris yours is agility what did you get, Chris? Well, I rolled a eight with fear on the duality die. <laughs> yeah, fourteen with fear. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna take the fourteen with fear because the DC here, you're trying to attack the thief, right? His is fourteen. That meets it, so it's going to succeed. All right. Um, now it is a fear item, though, so I'll be thinking about that while you guys roll your damage because as part of this i don't know how it works somebody explain to me what is happening it are you just a whirlwind of fairy and as you pass him by you let y'all do it with your teeth what is jugular okay all right I feel great. Like a duck tornado in the rain <laughs> i'm going to say as part of this as well like just for the theatrics of it when you bite into him with your teeth He's, you're going so fast. You're small. It wouldn't usually happen, but the momentum of this move, you pick him up a little bit and he's flinging. Okay, y'all are a three person tornado. So roll your damage, both of you, and each of you let me know what that is. 21. And then we're rolling what? So what's your, this is a little bit complicated, but we're just gonna call it a weapon attack. So your long sword damage which i think is a d8 1d8 plus three yeah did you already roll that out uh no all right so grab your d8 roll it and add three so six plus the 22 from justin right 21, 21. so we're at 27 guys okay absolutely that is going to hit. first of all again you hit and his severe threshold is 15. So you guys take him out as part of this. So please explain to me what this looks like. You initiated this, Chris. So you explain to me what this looks like as you just demolish this guy. Yeah, I assume um, Jimbo got his little grappling hook out, shot it at me. I grab onto it, <laughs> roll into him. He grabs my foot and just starts rolling me in. And uh, for the rogue guy in particular, he's just smacking me with him, or smacking him with me. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Great. Great. All right. So uh, <laughs> just so smack you smack him, him to death? Like you just well, bam, well, bam until he dies. Okay. I right. love that. With and your body. <laughs> it also tells me exactly how I'm going to use but... the fear that I gained from Justin, which again, Kayla hasn't rolled with fear yet, um, which again not. means that I'm taking a rock into my stuff, but I'm not going to take it because I'm going to make a GM move with it instead. Um, because of the thing that is happening to you, you're sturdy, but you're not Bugs Bunny. 
you, I'm going to use this GM move. You, Chris, Tank is going to take a stress because of the bodily injury that goes into this tag team attack. You know, you're strong, but all right. I love that. So you have one enemy that has flown into dust away. Buffy the Vampire Slayer style. <laughs> you have another enemy who has just been, I don't know, pancaked to death. Um, is anybody doing any? Oh, but that was with fear. That was a fear. So let me go ahead and start my turn. I right now have my action tracker with three tokens on it. So I am going to go ahead and use, I just, I want, I want something so good. The only two that are left were attacking Chris before. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing that. Um, so spending one of these guys and then I'm going to make my attack. Oh man, that is a Five. Ugh, okay, well, nothing there. All right, all right, no problem. But I am going to try one more time. Different guy. Here we go. Oh, a natural one. <gasps> I mean, like, that's a critical fail. I don't know if that works the same way in here, but as a GM, I get natural 20s. I think that I would get a critical fail. I'm going to say... Each one of them is trying to grab you as you go past. Like when you tie a string to the ceiling fan and you're trying to grab it as it goes past. Um, that second guy, as he does that, he actually does grab on for a second. But instead of dealing any damage to you, he's actually slung out. So he is now away from both of you by just... He's still in close range. He's only flown about 10 feet. No damage, but... He's on the ground. And I'm going to say at this point, he's vulnerable while he's on the ground. He's going to be vulnerable to melee. Okay. Um, but that's my turn. So well, it then, turns back I over to you guys. Start running back to combat. And as I'm running back over to the fight, um, Bill will land on top of the poor fella that is uh, now laying on the ground and just start rooster clawing and like just start tearing his chest up. Oh, okay, great. So that is going to take an action token to do. Um, uh -huh. But because you were at, because you were further than the close range, this yeah. is where that agility check comes into play, okay? okay? So you're gonna need to make an agility check to see if you're able to get there without anything happening in transit, okay? okay? So just roll your duality plus your agility. Spend a hope if you'd like, you know? Um, I don't know, I got a 10 with hope. A 10 with hope? Yeah. I'm gonna say that, oh, a 10 with hope. I'm gonna say that that's fine in this specific situation. It's very, very muddy. Um, okay. But I, it's I, raining. Yeah, I, I, I think the DC that I had set was 10, which is easy. But that's fine. You met it. So you get there and let Bill take his attack. Absolutely. Go ahead. Please roll a fear. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a 18 with hope. Ooh, oh, nice. 18 with hope. All right. Yeah. So you mark a hope for yourself. Remember, you get to add a hope. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then with your, you're absolutely going to hit him. Again, his difficulty is 13. And go ahead and roll damage. Oh, fuck yeah. I got a six on the die. Um, so he does six uh, physical damage. So he's just like, just tearing him up. Well done, Bill. I okay. love this. All right. Well, that hits his major, so his major damage threshold. So he's taking two health, and as he's getting tore up, he starts to scream like a little girl because he's what, looking what, pretty rough. What um, does vulnerable do? Ooh, you are absolutely right. It actually added the um, the advantage to your attack. So roll your hope uh, die again, just to make sure that you don't get a critical. Do you remember what your fear die was? Yeah, that's a six. No, I, I got a nine. Okay, good point. Okay, great. All right, so that was with hope. So by d divine right, you guys are still acting. Um, 
Well then, I'll also reach out with my short sword and stab the guy on the ground that Bill's scratching up. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> All right, I'm Bill, 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 hold him down. Bill, hold him down. All right. Oh, uh, and that would be a 14 with fear. Ooh, all right. With fear, that's going to mm-hmm. let me take one of your, your bath tokens from home. Remember, I now have one of your home tokens. But yeah, you get to go. <laughs> And then I do seven damage as I That's gonna send my short sword down into her. I sink my little sickle into him. All right, and as you do that, he's gonna sound bite for dying uh, because he's dead. You've <laughs> killed that. And at this point, this last thistle folk guy who has watched again, one of them get turned into dust in a launch. The other one get just slapped into pulp by a fairy who's grizzled and sh- but shaking it off. And then a rooster and a monkey, a simia, just like come in and dive on this guy, start scratching and stabbing him to death. And this thistle folk guy, in his moment. He's looking pretty scared. So he is going to, with his action, he's going to try to run away. He's going to try to get to the very far distance. So I'm going to go ahead and make an agility roll for him. Unless, you know what? No, I'm not trying to trick anybody. The, The nature of this game is that you help everybody do stuff. Chris, I know that warriors have a specific skill. I think in D&D it's similar to Sentinel. You could try to stop him from going if you'd like. Would you like to yeah, do that? Yeah, he's in my range, right? Yeah, absolutely he is. I'll use an opportunity attack. So how so. do you do that? Can you read the ability for me? If an adversary attempts to leave your melee range. Okay make a reaction roll against their difficulty. Choose one effect on a successful roll or two on a critical success. Okay, so you get to make a check. So the check to beat is 13. And you're going to do it with your agility? Is that what it said? Um, it says make a reaction roll against their difficulty. That's all it said. Oh, I, I think that I get to decide what trait it applies to. I'm gonna say that it's agility based, I think, you know, in this case. So, go ahead. Duality dice, add your agility, add an experience if it's the level you'd like. (gasps) 25. With fear. With fear? Okay, well, I am going to take one of your beautiful teeth. Goodbye, this tooth. It's mine now. Um, But yeah, but it works. So you succeed. Tell me how you stop him. He turns to run. And what are you doing to stop him? And what action are you taking? Which one of those choices? I'm going to um, deal primary damage to him. And then I'll use my D6 that I got from uh, Anora's inspiration. Okay, great. So you're actually doing an opportunity attack here. Yeah, yeah. And to stop him, I took these out. I just... Okay, <laughs> you just dinged him in the eye, but now you're actually making an attack as well, right? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and make your attack roll. So this is your duality dice plus your agility. So then with this guy, do I roll this now? Nope, that's going to be part of the... Well, I don't know. I think you could do either, right? You could add it to a roll or to damage, Anora. Yeah, you can... Hold on, let me find it um let's see head into the uh let's see they can spin the rally die add it to an action roll reaction or a damage roll so to keep in the spirit that i didn't say before i rolled so i'll just keep it Mm -hmm. it's uh 13 with fear okay well i am going to take another one of your beautiful pearly whites i'm gonna take this nice molar oh many um but (laughs) Yeah, uh, you are going to hit. You're absolutely going to hit. So go ahead and roll damage. So that's your D8 plus 3. And you get to add the 6 to it as well. Uh, 
uh, 11. 11 damage. How do you want to do this? <laughs> um, as he's running away, I threw the teeth. He stumbles, uh-huh. and I run and I grab his little ankles. <laughs> I put them down. His little ankles. I take my uh, sword out and I smash him in you the back. S- you smash him in the back. Okay. I smash and- him with the long sword, I guess. All right. And as you slash against him in this cinematic moment, the rain is pouring down and blood is spraying up. Would you like it to spray you in the face or not? Absolutely. Okay. So it get in there. So it <laughs> sprays you in the rain and you see this he just threw his vampire teeth away, but you wouldn't know it from the bloodlust he just experienced as a ah! and that mm-hmm. echoes into the woods. It is still raining at this point, but we are officially exiting combat as there are no enemies still in play. So, uh, all panther things still chilling up top. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Strix Wolf is still uh, looking mm-hmm. at you guys through this whole thing. And in fact, I'll say that you can't see the babies because they've nestled under her and she's just kind of casually looking at you, but she is still up there. Yeah. Good job, guys. The first combat. Can we very briefly talk about how we think we, it went since we're play testing? Sure. Yeah, that was um, fun. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the, fun. I I understood everything. It felt a little overwhelming just at the beginning, uh, how much the enemies could do before we could do much. But I think that's also us getting used to how this is a little more flowy combat opposed to like, a D&D initiative order. Well, remember, yeah, I think those also, it was like an ambush. ambushes, right? Yeah. So, like, they don't normally get to do that at all never and i and i'm gonna say also i didn't um my only criticism so far of this adventure is that never do the enemies get to act in that way in any other scenario i think it's interesting that for the quick start adventure they're like but this time it does work that way you know um i get it though it's an ambush it's pretty classic you know ttrpg one hmm. thing i i was confused on so there's not a turn order but it works the first one of us to roll a fear it goes to the gm's turn after and they get to take their actions is that how it works Wait, say or do that you one just more time for me okay so you know there's not like a turn order so you just kind of say hey i want to go and if that person rolls with fear does that mean it swaps to your turn and then you get to take your actions yeah. or do we that's yes. how it works. Okay. Yes, exactly. Because I was confused on that. Yeah. I, that is yeah. how. That's why I was overwhelmed. I was like, why can't I attack? I'm just getting ate up out here. Yeah, it was, it was, I think it was a little overwhelming there at the beginning because I got to ambush and then the first thing that y'all did, y'all rolled fear. And so I got to immediately snag that combat. It seems like in the rules that you get to choose if you want to take combat at that point. And Jean screen, huzzah, I agree. Um, but sorry, uh, in chat, sorry. But um, it seems like I get to choose, but I did want to take it this time because we're doing the example of how combat works. Yes, the fear okay. is the thing that allows me, um, okay. or a failure as well, I believe, but it was mostly okay. fear that was channeling it. Um, Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you could act after every single fear, or it's after like you've accumulated so many fear. Every fear. That's okay. that is the light that turns on on my actions. Is that now I can also at any given time I could choose to interrupt if if y'all are just winning if y'all are and nobody's rolling any fear I could spend two fear tokens to interrupt at any point but I have to have two fear tokens to do it. So okay. emptying all of your fear as a GM is not super wise. I, I guess I'm also curious, like from the GM side and I guess the player side, uh, is it like, say you a, we roll a fear, you get to go, uh, you play as say that boss, uh, and then it goes back to our turn, we roll another fear. Do you, can you keep using that boss again or do you have to say no. go through each character at least once? It doesn't seem Same like... Same on the player side. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's a strong ruling, but they definitely recommend 
if you have one of the adversaries act, don't have them activate again, <laughs> even if you have remaining action tokens. So for I'm the thinking most... that for our, yeah, I'm thinking for them, the players, so not necessarily our group, but like, I could see there being a, like people that are players that don't talk as much or aren't as like putting themselves in the conversation as much. They might be quiet and never have a turn if it's not like a forced, each player gets to go at least once before they get to go again. Uh, I think so too. And um, and I think that we did really well as a group with everybody getting in on the action. Um, but uh, that is a lot of people's concern. And it's up to the GM really to lead that and kind of say, if somebody's trying to be what they call main character syndrome in tabletop yeah. RPG, then they could say, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this. And it's usually the GM's kind of at their discretion to say, okay, well, I love your ideas. But uh, but maybe <laughs> someone else might want, you know, a little turn. Uh, and they did also introduce an optional ruling that they talked about in the version 1.3 thing yesterday, which was basically at the start of combat, give each player three action tokens for those specific parties and then it limits your resources for what you're going to spend. Yeah, I was going to ask that if there was a limit on how many actions a player could take during a given time, like at the, like at the beginning when you were, yeah. as Stephen was describing his, like you initially took it like that is like possibly multiple actions. I'm like, is there a limit or like what's the actual stopping point? There's there's yeah. no limit, not really. Yeah. The the limit is if you roll with fear, I you're done. You know that's that's me <laughs> taking it back from you guys. But um, but no, like there's there's not actually mechanically a limit, and because the GM is not even forced to jump in when fear gets rolled, I could just let y'all keep going if I wanted to. Yeah. If I wanted to let y'all cook, I could. I don't think it would be very fun for the game, you know, but I, I could see that, that as being an interesting mechanic for like later, like higher levels, like you're fighting a boss, like the, the DM just lets the players pour into it because, hey, they were been invulnerable for a moment or something or like that was an illusion. The players waste all this, the DM racked up all these abilities and then they can come crashing back down. I thought mm -hmm. I thought of a similar thing. I thought of hey, if if like they're up against an enemy, you know, like sometimes in games, one of the coolest things that I think happens is the adventuring party goes up against someone that they have no shot at, at killing. And a good GM is not doing that to kill the party, right? They're instead doing that to show the party how much they have to grow before they can take on this adversary. You see it in like Final Fantasy all the time, right? Sephiroth comes in very early. <laughs> They can't do anything to him yet, but then they get to, we're going to be picking of the pirates. And they just get stronger and stronger until they can take him out. So let y'all just wail on him. And he's just like, <laughs> like Anandor from Zel Ocarina of Time, you know, <laughs> puny little ribbit. How dare you? I love you so much. Wasn't it cute also that they were ribbit ambushers? I didn't play yeah. for that. That's what yeah, as soon as I found out, she got so mad. <laughs> But generally, I think it was a lot of fun. Now, I rolled really well, so that was a good time for you me. Did. You she did. You did roll well. I have a ritual where I roll my dice before things and see who wants to play. She rolled two natural 20s in a row right off the bat, and she rolled a natural 20 right there and two 19s. She's back. She's so happy to be Ooh, back. Shit. She's a little forest fairy of a beauty. Uh -huh. Anyway, okay. All right, so anything else to add about the combat for now? Or are we good to move on? And are we all feeling up to continuing a little bit further or do we need to close down the session for the night? I, I mean, I'm good to keep going, but I accept the rest of everybody else. I could, I could go a little while longer. Okay, yeah, cool. Well, then we will I, go a little, go ahead. I, don't, I was gonna say, no, we're waiting for Chris to get back. I'm gonna take a brief second. I need to go check on, again, something my cat was doing, sure. <laughs> more loud racket. Uh, Absolutely. So I'll be right back cats in that little basket all right cool um yeah definitely i think it went well i think oh man i'm gonna have to figure out the map uh because yeah. i don't know what room. i was worried about we, that honestly but I... we, we should have checked that uh yeah my question though were you able to right click on your little speaker down there and then you go know, to the sounds option I, I tried it, but I didn't see anything there. I'll be honest, it kind of also felt like the dream where you're naked in front of stage, you know, we're live there, like, 
and it's all I'm, I'm so glad it's all of our friends and mm-hmm. everything in chat y'all are very nice and everything but I was a little mm-hmm. bit nervous you know so um, I think at some point as I do this more I'll get more comfortable with it and I won't panic when an mm-hmm. error happens um, but yeah but that's definitely it's a stressful situation any of us would have panicked well, and so you handled stressful. it great thank you you just made a little judgment call and you were like you know what this is gonna be fine and it was I had the well, backup you had the backup ready mm-hmm. that's guys See- that that's was, that was good on you because that mm-hmm. would have been where I fell through. I would have been like, ah, well, I guess we're just not doing it. That's like, the kind of GM that I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the kind of GM that I am, guys. Again, mechanics, not always my forte. But that preparation, though, if you're in person, the snack. The map has mm-hmm. color on it. It's beautiful in the Discord. Did y'all see? It was really cute. It looks like a board game. It's yeah. adorable. That's how all yeah. of my maps are, Kayla. I do it up. Uh, <laughs> and thank you, Cindy. And thank you, Jean Screen, Cindo Window, and Bugaloo. Y'all are very sweet in chat. I promise that we're going to get right back into it in just a second. Um, uh, by the way, I think that Chris, so, you know, he, he did need to talk to his mom today. There is his, his uh, someone in his family is not doing super well. And so he might be gone for a little bit. We can say that because of the stress, he is exhausted and momentarily is going to take a breather while we kind of progress and move forward. Um, but so now that we're all here, is the cat okay, Justin? Everything good? Uh, yeah, I was opening drawers and moving stuff around in the bathroom that it didn't need to be into. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Fantastic. Like cats too. Classic, Classic cats. Cat. Very cat-like. Oh my god, he's back! Yay. Hi, everything good and all? Everything good. Okay, cool. Hospital updates. Okay, great. Um, we're, we're all good to keep going, but if we need to adjourn at all, we can, um, are we good to keep going or do we need to close it off for the night? Um, that was, yeah, that was for you, Chris. All right, great. Okay. So let's, so first, you know, everything is quieted down and I'm even going to say as part of this, the sudden rain and storm in the Sablewood, it comes and goes as fast as that. And it does actually cease there for a moment, or at this point. Now you are still standing there in the mud, but it does in fact cease. And the trees feeling almost sentient, they actually all kind of break and bend away from each other to give you all a very brief reprieve and you can see into the the starry night sky giving you a little bit of beauty here so what are you guys doing um uh, clearing the the road so we can continue on our way okay all right it's easy enough it does take a little bit of time yeah Mm -hmm. just sitting all right yeah, I imagine you play oh, something it. on your banjo. Yeah, there you go. Something on my banjo to try and calm myself down because my armor messed up and it's really upsetting to me. Mm, yeah. I remove the current stuff. By the way, I definitely do want to check these bandits, like especially like the one that seemed different. Anything in their pockets? Any eyes on their neck? As will be mentioned. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's contagious. Don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So we're all divvying up responsibilities. I'm going to say that all of these things are easy enough to accomplish. Kayla, I did want to check in with you as part of this. Are, yeah, he did chew it on a guy's neck. That is yeah, exhausting. Um, uh, as part of this, are y- are y'all taking a short rest? Nora is strumming on her banjo. Is it short rest time or are y'all just going to like get this card out of the way and get moving? Um, we can we can take a short rest. I, I took quite a bit of uh damage from that 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 blast that that dude threw me across the field with yeah the girl's hurt (laughs) okay well so go ahead oh i was gonna say i also imagine tank would uh take the teeth from the guy who tried to steal my little baggie great and i add them to the pile yes absolutely you know your teeth that i have a few of okay (laughs) great so um okay y'all can do all of those things absolutely um so let's go ahead and talk about now i want to do uh i for these enemies 
let's just give a little bit of money. The module doesn't say that there's any money specifically, but we're going to do it. We're going to say that each of you, if y'all are divvying fairly, which we mm -hmm. do in my we, taste, yeah. each of you is going to get to take, um, they're thieves. So I'm going to say that they had a little bit of money on them. I'm going to give you each two coins, um, not the handfuls, but the coins themselves, which again, I think are 10 coins each, right? When you mark those, each one is representative of 10, I believe, um, at least in the way that I was reading it, but just a little bit of money for you guys. Um, nothing. You know what? I'm going to say that Justin, as you are looking through this what these people that one of them you actually see has he doesn't have an eye but he does have on the back of his neck a tattoo of an eye and i'm also going to tell you that he has some shoes on his feet that are really interesting looking um they look like they're actually made from some of the purplish uh metallic-y looking leaves from the trees of the sable wood but with the one that you're looking at is the one that was blown to smithereens by Anora, and the sandals look not usable at this point but even as you handle them right. slightly you actually feel a burst of adrenaline um you, you feel like you could go on a run but they're they definitely are very damaged. Well, hey, just the ankle. Well, I assume we're just the ankles that are left in the feet, and it's like I hey, guys found some cool like leaf shoes. <laughs> I think I think they got some like caffeine or something like maybe some tea leaves. Uh, right. I'm gonna leave the feet here. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, we shouldn't bring the feet. All right, so um, I think that covers everything everybody wanted to do, but the, for the short rest, go ahead and look at, y'all should have as part of your character sheets, uh, one of those pages tells you things you could do on a short rest and tell me what you are doing. Okay. So I've got the 10 wounds mm -hmm. um, to clear 1d4 hit points. So she is going to look around and she sees some like golden rods and she's gonna pick them up and like crush them and make a little paste and like patch up her little side wound and like Aww. shove it in there to kind of make it feel better and hopefully promote the healing process so it's very cute I love that. which one is the four one it's the little pyramid it's the pyramid oh no yeah okay and it's the top number it's whatever's at the top of the pyramid right okay yeah two Okay, so I only have one that's taken away now. Oh, okay. All right, so that's Kayla's two, right, I think? Mm -hmm. Or is that just one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Um, so, well, I had three total, and so I took two down, so I just have one missing hit point now. Yes, but time. I mean, you get multiple actions on a short rest, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, you can do two things. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So you can choose one other thing to do. I think in my room. She's rooms, gotta repair her armor, right? Yeah, of course yeah. she would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of, so let's see. Hold on. So I got a basic supply kit. So I'm gonna assume that there's a needle and thread in there, and there's a needle that's big enough to go through the leather. And so she's taking it and she's um trying to sew the buckles back together and everything like that. And then do I have to? Yeah, I gotta roll the pyramid again. <laughs> It's another two. Okay. All right. Fantastic. We love yeah. to see it. Those twos. I mean, two is, is, is average for, for the D4. So oh. it's pretty mm -hmm. good. Um, okay, great. So that wraps up Anora. So let's go to, on to the next one. Let's say, um, Ted, what are you doing for the short rest? So Ted is going to, uh, circle over to Anora and be like, can, uh, can I get some of that uh, that little stuff you just rubbed on your, your wound there? Uh, of course, you can have some golden rod. <laughs> no good. Uh, I'll share with him. So sweet. Awesome. I got a three, which is what I have. Nice. So, 
and then I see you like sewing up your armor and I'm like, oh, well, here, let me get this side for you and I will help you repair some of your armor as well. Thank you. Three. Oh, get them all back. My armor's fixed. See, I got those ones on the back. You did. She's very grateful. She's trying not to cry because this was really <laughs> messing with her. She got this armor for her from her dad, like, on her like name day like you know Aww. when she came of age as a lady so she was really worried about it those were some nasty thistle folk <laughs> they were rude they were mean. peasants yeah, peasants <laughs> absolutely can't be trusted all right uh tank what are you doing with your short rest i'm going to tend my wounds and for that one i go over to jimbo and i ask him oh, for girl. some of his dirt Rub it yeah. In my yeah, yeah, we gotta rub some dirt in there. I feel better. <laughs> oh my god! In the mud. <laughs> but so then, just, there you go. <laughs> and I got a three. So that heals me up. Great, perfect. And then I uh, repair armor, and then for that one, I go to Anora, and I guess just like ask her about her cool name day. Fit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah uh, Tank, uh, before you repair head. that, if you'd like to, we can get a massage chain going. Like, if you massage my back, I massage yours, and I'm also happy to help you out with your uh, your armor there. I might, you know, raise some hopes here. To reduce you know. the stress, you're gonna massage one another. Look, like like for, that... look for raising hope instead. Yeah. Oh, yeah two yeah, people yeah. do it. We get two oh. each. <laughs> oh my god. Do Let's do it. But yeah, I'll help you. Uh, help you out Just with your armor. Just two bros rubbing. Two bros. Uh, With those magic hands, giving each other hope. Yeah, just, just hoping. I look ever. over as I'm like sewing in Nora's <laughs> armor, and I'm like, Jimbo does have some of the best back massages. On <laughs> well, my hands are all calluses. It's all from massage. <laughs> and Nora's just distracted by the dirt that you just rubbed into Tank's wound. It's <laughs> concerning, disgusting. <laughs> I've it's a lot. The, the dirt band-aid before. That's why I came and asked you for your weight <laughs> So each of you, you dirt bros, y'all each gained two hope, correct? Mm -hmm. And we know that you fixed your, uh, no, you didn't fix your armor. You healed a little bit tank, right? Yeah, I was suggesting, both, yeah. Yeah, I was asking, like, could I repair his armor instead so we oh, can sure. both Absolutely. relax and get the hope? Got yeah. it. Okay, great. All right. Then then that's everything, right? We're all wrapped up on what we're doing for our short rest. So, okay. All right. Well, remember that it had just hit dusk when you were entering. It's only been like an hour or so after that. So it's still, it's still fairly early in the evening for adventurers. Steven, chill. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. All right. So, like, okay. So... At this point, you know, you guys have this package to manage, um, so you guys can absolutely continue on your journey. Um, now, realistically, once you have gotten into the Sablewood, I'm going to say that uh, it's probably only like another day's journey so you can travel for another few hours at some point you are going to need to perform a long rest um you guys we're not going to go around and talk about that long rest together but you can you know uh especially knowing that we're probably not going to have a physical encounter for the rest of the evening since we're drawing close y'all can mark those after to restore everything i wanted to do the short rest role play and everything but mm -hmm. uh, but for the long rest y'all can talk amongst each other and figure out if y'all doing any group activities um but i will say that as a little moment for you guys that um anora as a bard, you had heard at one point a rumor. So as you're sitting around the campfire and strumming your banjo to everybody, you're telling them about a little rumor and then you make a song up about it. The rumor that you had heard is that travelers through the Sablewood who don't burn a campfire throughout the night sometimes wake up in a different location in the morning. Now it's a rumor but uh, you make up a little ditty about it. And I do want to ask, do you guys burn a campfire through the night or do y'all let it go? Let it go. 
No. So the rain chilled out, or is it still happening? The rain is chilled out, remember, right there at the end of the battle, yeah. the stars were all visible. Anuri's pretty superstitious. Yeah, I feel like uh, 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 Ted is as well. He came from a pretty, like, spiritual part of the mountains so like he's probably like well you know if the if the forest spirits are gonna try to move us around they might try to steal stuff from us too we should probably just let it burn through the night mm -hmm. all right i love that so it comes down to justin right or guide us. yeah justin is the is yeah. the tiebreaker here unless y'all yeah. want to do rollies for it y'all could always do rollies which is uh, I'd, I'd recommend rollies Okay. Uh, who okay. wants to be so which on one are the, we rolling? Who wants to roll a hope die? It's just gonna both be hope dies. It's D twelves for fun for for thematic purposes. So Kayla, I'll say you can roll one, and Chris, you roll the other as our newer TTRPG <laughs> players. So whoever wins, you get to decide what. We're happens. just rolling one one dice. One die. Yep. And whoever gets the higher score, this is just fun, like little play stuff. You pit us against each other. That's the oh no. Do. I, I got a three. Okay. I got an 11. <gasps> no, no, she's going to be so mad at him. Okay, so you convince, you convince her. <laughs> the mustache. So you convince her uh, that, how, well, tell tell me, what do you say to yes, her? Are tell you, me. Are you convincing her that it's not going to happen? Are you convincing her? Are you tricking her? me? Yeah. He's kind of keeping me? the same energy I had when we entered the forest. He's still, like, very much not taking it probably as serious as he should. He just loves it here. It's sparkling. Mm -hmm. uh, and he... the romance. The romance of the adventure, you know? Okay. There's only one way to, like, figure out if legends are true. Okay. All right. Damn, I wasn't in it. And then you just... You reeled me in. Yeah. You son of a bitch, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> so she's begrudgingly going to accept the romance of adventure, whatever that is. And she's going to let it ride. All right. So I'm going to give one last little flavor just because you guys, if you, like, it's so fun. They've written so much fun stuff. This is not actually part of the quick start adventure. It's Sablewood lore and stuff. Um, but I'm filtering it in because I am a preparation GM. But I have one more little cute special moment. Who would like to dibs on it? And I'll give it to whoever. Not Anora. You've already had one with your banjo. And I've had enough main character who energy. Like yeah. I can take it. Okay, great. Okay. All right. So, Ted... As you are all listening to the banjo playing around the fire, you um, hear some little skittering there to your side, some little clickety clacks. And you look over, and there is a fox bat chewing on some of the food that they've opened your pouch of food, and they're nibbling on. Well, I'm going to say he's, he's nibbling on Bill's food. And. <sighs> As he feels My your eyes on him, thing. he looks back. Because and... that's the sound that foxes make, guys. It's it's not anything else. It's that's the sound that it makes as it looks over that, to you. Song otherwise, but we'll get back. We, you know. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> how are you I, reacting to this? Well, I guess when I first look down and see him in it, did I notice an eye on the back of his neck? You absolutely do. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a monkey, and I snatch him. I just, like, quick hands, just, like, grab him by the back. Yeah, of the, the fox pet? Yeah, that uh, 100 really How are you snatching this? Is this an aggressive move, or is this, yes. like, it is? Okay. Are you scruffing <laughs> him? Like a scruffing like a mother him. would scruff, scruff her baby. Because like, you said that he, like, oh, looked back up at me, him. right? Scruff okay. I need to know your intentions. Yeah. I need to know your intentions. Scruffing. Scruffing okay. Is, All right. is, okay. yeah. As long as you do not mean to harm this animal, I'm going to let you just have it. There won't need to be a roll. If okay. you are trying to like do something no, no, Okay. I'm not okay. trying to hurt it. I All just right. want to pick it up. I'm gonna let you do it because I d I don't need a consequence for a happy thing. So yeah. So okay, you scruff him and he <laughs> tries to like wriggle free. But then as you you're holding him up like this he's yeah, just like uh, he's, e he's eating bill's food 
He's just trying to get away. <laughs> he's sad. Okay. He's super bad. And, he, and he's got an eye on the back of his neck. I spin him around so everyone can see the eye. He's putting his feet up onto your wrist and trying to push out mm-hmm. of your Hello. hand and scratching and scratching at you. Once everyone sees the eye, I'll put him back. So is the him. eye like, is it like a brand, like? burned into the fur is the fur no, a different this color eye looks concerned it is an eyeball this is a oh it's a real eye. eyeball yeah oh my god why are y'all freaking out about that that's freaky it's got <laughs> a neck <super> eye <laughs> <laughs> i would i just wanted you all to be able to see it now yeah all right so um who has the highest uh sorry I'm, it's not charisma. What is it in this presence, presence. in this group? That between, well, I was gonna ask between Justin and Chris because you were the guys. That, okay, it's Chris. Okay, so so you showed everybody the eye, but then you released the fox bat. The fox bat is going to run immediately over to Tank, and he's going to clamber up and get right into your uh, the nestle of your arm and. He's, uh, yeah, he, and after a little bit, he actually does stop trembling, and you go to sleep with a little blanket, and he's curled up there in the blanket with you. Now, when you wake up in the morning, he has gone, and he's stolen a little bit of y'all's food. There's little bits of food that are left over. Not all of it, just a little animal amount, you know? It's totally <laughs> the mustache. Um, but you spent the night curled up with a little tiny fox bat in the sable wood with an eye on the back of his neck. All right. Can we keep this little guy with us? Mm, would you keep like the eye to try? in the group? Because to watch the watchers, you know what I mean. Ooh, I love it. Okay, so you're gonna try. How are you trying to keep him in the group? Forcefully prison type of stuff, or like kind ingratiating yourself to him kind of stuff? Um, he seems to like food. He does. I want to barter, incentivize. Okay. So then make a presence check. This is going to be a hard check. But if you want to add a hope or anything, or if anybody's helping, you certainly could. Yeah. Mm. I would love to I, add a hope. Can I donate a piece of jerky from my pack? As a health the, action? Sure, absolutely. Pod. And give him advantage? Okay, great. So yeah. in this... Back to group, but can a teammate, or can we, like, hinder them as... Oh. I'm going to allow Bim- one attempt to keep this creature. Um, so. Oh, sorry. I was gonna suggest, like Bim- uh, Jimbo is a little hesitant in having whatever this creature is with us. Oh. Do you want to roll for it to see who helps him yeah. or like, you know, hinders him? I love this. Like, I know that a lot of TTRPG is like no uh, PVP, but let's let's negotiate here at the table. Safety yeah. tools. Is everybody okay with casual fun PVP like this? Is everybody yeah. okay with that? Yeah. If we end up with them perfectly okay. fine with that, Jimbo right. is himself is just kind of like. Okay. Well, yeah, then... I'm totally cool with it because my character <laughs> is just like reaching out everything, getting us right. into stuff. So, so of course, I'm going things, to be like. Yeah. First things first. Uh, Justin and Kayla, go ahead and roll D12s. And whoever okay. has the higher one of that, you're going to get to, uh, you know, oh, is it a 12? <laughs> oh, mine's a 2. <laughs> okay. All right. You're All not right. getting any help from me. <laughs> so you throw the jerky out there, and I don't know, you just grab it and pop it in your mouth. <laughs> oh, nice. <Jerky>. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're going to make an unassisted roll for this, okay, Chris? So go ahead and you can roll and add your presence. Okay. I was going to say, because uh, he did mention hope, would I be able to do the tickets to the gun show thing since he was nestled in my arm sleeping? Oh, I was going to say there's no way that you're going to find is. a muscle thing. But you're mm-hmm. like, you like show him how warm it was. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can spend a hope and add your plus two. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. I had all the like, full help. Because every time I roll with fear, I get hope, and I've been rolling with fear. I'm also gonna say, for (laughs) yeah, for this also, it's a little girl, and she's just like she needs she needs someone to keep her warm and stuff, and she's just she's she needs father energy, and for some reason, Tank has that today. I don't know. Tank just may have some flex mentality. Now it's a hard check. This is a wild animal. Four. 
<laughs> five with hope. Okay, well, you get to keep your hope. <laughs> so if you didn't already mark it, you get to keep it. So that's a good thing if you've marked it. Um, thank God it was with hope, but um, but that is not going to be successful. And uh, I'm going to say that as part of this, you think that it's been successful. That's the, the hope in your heart. Um, but he is going to, as part of this though, the next day he's going, when he's gone and he's stolen some food, apparently he understands tradesies because he's left a little tooth there with you. Kind of tooth, a human tooth, an animal tooth? Some kind of animal Emotion. tooth. Yeah. Like a raccoon I'm gonna tooth? I'm going to say it's an alligator an tooth, okay? It's a it's a tooth from the alligator, which is a creature in this wood, and he's left you a tooth, noticing that you liked them, okay? Is it more heel or gator? I, I, I don't know. It's called an alligator. <laughs> like, it's, it's like, this is First one, one of its kind in my bag. Yeah. <laughs> alligator. Uh, there is no description. Cool. It has finesse melee, D4 physical. <laughs> anyway. Oh no, that's the alligator scale shield. Anyway, okay. Much healer as much gator as your mind can. <laughs> yeah. so whenever but, we wake up in the morning, that's gone. I do want to know, like, kind of like yeah, under my breath. Like, oh, thank God, yeah. we had enough winged things around here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, and and as part of this, you'll never really know if the <laughs> does Tinkerbell do anything weird to teeth when he first acquires them. <laughs> I don't think Perhaps so. That's the unprofessional. Often. That would be unprofessional, Spits yeah. Put some in the bag. <laughs> but I'm going to say that for your party, you actually will never know if this small fox bat actually left in the night or if he was left behind. Because when you wake up in the morning, you do wake up next to that tooth. But you all wake up in an unfamiliar area now all of your belongings your carriage your horse everything is there but you are in a different part of the sable wood and as you are getting your bearings about you you look and you see a palisade wall so a wall where guards are walking across and you are looking in uh, at i'm going to read this next part the path your road, your journey has led you to a palisade wall. I am interjecting that. Uh, and you spot a large stone pillar carved top to bottom in ancient dwarven symbols. This denotes you know Anora based on what Marlowe had told you. One corner of the peaceful village of Hush, where you were trying to go. When... Uh, when you're looking at this area, you can see that the forest is still lush and green inside of the palisade walls, but the guards that stand atop of it uh, are actually holding fishing poles, and you can see the lines go into the treetops, and sometimes one of them is pulling back, and they pull out a little creature of some kind that they hang on a line. They're fishing into the trees. It's called sky fishing. Um and as you all gather your things you see one of the guards at the top of the wall kind of walks back and forth you see him get a little bit uncomfortable and he looks into the tree line and he spits over the wall and kind of he doesn't cross himself but he does i'll say this i'll say he does this as like the movement of something symbolic that he's kind of blessing himself and you gather up your things your carriage your horse you are allowed to enter through the 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 city walls um as you pass beyond the stone marker you feel a small sensation like the pop of a bubble almost like when you're on an airplane and the pressure changes and then all of a sudden sounds of friendly chatter become louder now you almost feel like you could hear that sound from outside the walls but looking back you don't think that you heard it before but it's omnipresent now and you walk into what is a bustling small outpost town uh, though the trees of the sablewood are unchanged here there is a distinctive safe and comforting air 
A few smiling faces turn to you as your carriage rolls in, waving or casting a warm greeting toward the party. There's lively music drifting your direction from the tavern at the center of town. You know you need to find the White Fire Arcanist to deliver the package from the king. And that is going to be where we will pick up next time. But you've made it safely okay. in hush. We did it! Right. And that was the White Fire what? Arcanist. Yeah. Yeah, you've specifically been tasked with delivering this mysterious package to the White Fire. And some people say Arcanist, Arcanist. I say Arcanist. I don't know how other people say it, but um, a magician of some kind. <laughs> but yeah. Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas. Magical person. Magical person. <laughs> yep. So. Magical Apple tomato, saw. magical tomato. Magical, tomato, <laughs> magical, magical person tomato. from Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, from Arkansas. <laughs> But that's Arsenal. it. Yeah. So good job, guys. We've we've started on our journey. We uh, killed some thistle folk in a really uh, exciting, interesting way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And remember, do your long rest actions before we meet up again because you're gonna get all of those advantages and stuff. And we'll be picking up the next time um, right here. Any questions about like the game or what like next session is going to look like? Anything like that? You were good at it. You were such a good narrator. I was very into it. I've been doing yeah. this for a while, guys. Yeah, I can tell. Were you immersed? <laughs> Did you like yeah. it? Yeah. That palisade, I was imagining it. Mm -hmm. I was looking out for tattoos in my mem like my imagination. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, again, oh. mechanics not my strong point, but you give me materials. I'm a print them. I'm a highlight them. I have little tabs here for like all the little things that I read, like all these different tabs. Yeah, uh, and mm -hmm. all of these things that I've added into the story: the fly fishing, the eye thing, the shoes that you found, Justin. None of that's in the Quick Start Adventure. It's all in this other materials. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad. I'm glad that y'all enjoyed it. Yeah. So would be curious like, during the uh, like long rest downtime, could like you know work on the project or repairing uh, armor be towards the shoes? Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll have to if that's what you want to do. I do think that that's gonna. I'm gonna say that that's pretty easy to do because I kind of want you to be able. To like, do the only it. other thing I needed to do I at all was maybe preparing. Too, so. I'm going to roll a d a d4 okay and the way that a d this works is that the score is going to be how many nights you need to work on it three you will like three have. three of my choices so like if i did two like during the next long rest if i did two whole things of just repairing it well, i think you can, or only, can you only do one at a time i think you can only do one of each i've looked at it a lot but i think that's the intention so but yeah sure. All right, well, we'll talk about other stuff off stream and everything. If there are questions like those that y'all have, let me know. But thanks, everybody, so much that was in chat. Thank you, Bugaloo and Jean Screen and Spudnick, it is you. Um, Cinda Window and, and, oh, and Turtle Guy. I, I saw you in here at one point. I don't know if you're still in here, but thank you all so much for joining and listening in. I hope that you had fun. Thanks for bearing with us through the audio issues there at one point. It was really great to have you to let us know. And we will be back, I believe, this time next Wednesday. Justin, is that okay for the next Wednesday? Okay, so we'll be back next week on Wednesday to continue as our adventurers enter into Hush.